ruining it for me. Does it look on screen like Bowser's grabbing the egg out of the hen? Because that was what I was going for. Right. I mean, you know, it's not the highest quality camera. It's not uh, zoomed in. We make it work. Oh, man. Bowser we are luck. Okay. Just making sure. You say, oh, man, I didn't want you to say something no, you didn't want no, to say long. No, it's all good. Oh, boy. I'll move the camera once Luke gets here. Feeling good. I look good. I feel good. I make I love, love good. good. Ha -ha. Ha -ha. All right, let's do this. Three, two, one. Go Nintendo Podcast webisode 915. The Le Chunk <laughs> Podcast. Wow. Mom Brain, tell us about Le Chunk, please. And Badly. Basically, it looks like a little pig, but a little pig. It's a great one. Le Chunk searches for food all day. It possesses a keen sense of smell, but doesn't use it for anything other than foraging. They're a foot tall, 22 and a half pounds, male and female. The category is hog. Abilities include gluttony. If the Pokemon is holding a berry to be eaten when its HP is low, it will instead eat the beery when its HP drops to half or less. Berries and cream, berries and cream. Berries. And Aroma Veil, which I am also that's, very good with. I believe that's in the house right now. You're incense or saging or something. I don't sage anymore. I walked in and uh, I was like, it's just like college yep. in here. As it was brought to my Where's attention that saging is uh -oh. a for major cats. form of cultural appropriation. Oh, so now it's Glade plugins for us. So uh, I will henceforth only burn herbs that I have grown in my Flash. garden. And have purchased from a dispensary. From now on, we will be only <laughs> buying on eBay used versions of the Febreze Scent Stories CD player. Wow. I always wanted one of those so bad, Was and it, I never who, got it. Somebody, some famous country singer did the song, didn't they? For Febreze? I want to say it was like Shania Twain or somebody I, for, the, for that exact, for the Scent Story thing. I could be wrong. Man, Come I smell Twitter. like a woman. Anyway. Bang, bang, mm. bang. Man, I smell like a woman. Yeah, right. But I can imagine that there's I'm a saying, lot of people who I, I got a like limited knowledge smell. of Shania Twain songs here to work with. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, I mean, that what's smell, the story? Here? That smell don't impress a me. Most. There you go. Well, yeah, he's. Just, I guess you're just trying to think of it from a marketing yeah. point of view. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What other Shania Twain songs are there? I we know. need a very specific country western pop star for this Glade yeah. plug-in yeah. CD. What? Uh, she had another big hit. What was it? It, I was going to say it's not long ago, but it was long ago. But after those two big ones. That don't impress me much? Was that? Hmm. I said that was the oh. first one I said. Uh, Can I? It's, it's, yes, finish your Pokemon. Uh, Aroma Veil protects the Pokemon and its allies from effects that prevent the use of moves. End of Pokemon. Thank section. you, Mom Brain. Look at how beautiful this is. Look at this little lady walking the podcast highway. We got a little lady. Did I tell you I was bitten by a ladybug the, uh, the other day? You told me, that's uh, not possible. Yeah. Yeah, so I was sitting at my desk upstairs doing work, and I had my arms like on the desk, and it bit me right underneath You're that kidding. freckle. I must, I must have had my arm on it, and I read, I looked into it, and it was like That's they rarely bite, I except didn't... for when they're like in big trouble. What? I yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't have believed that before today. That's I don't interesting. Um, I'm gonna, uh, if you're in the podcast chat, I will give you a picture of. Ladybug. Okay. Let me say hello to Mom Brain. Mom Brain, how are you? I am okay. How are you? That's great. I'm okay as well. Do is here. How are you, Do? Cuckoo. Thanks for joining us. Uh Nikki Hill is not here. He is at the circus again. Um, he uh wanted to make it very clear that it was a not an animal circus. So, you know, we talked about that last week. Not an animal, just a people circus. Um, what did he say? Another week, another circus. Another week, another circus. Uh, but Lube will be coming today. I found that out Spoiler alert. an hour and a half ago. So he'll show up probably in the next eight minutes or so. Let me say hello to Tent Vision and Drake and Radical Defect and uh, Mom Brain, Ice Stillbird, Kupu the Mummy, Anastasia Beaverhausen, Zikamudo, uh, Drake, 
alternates list, Steve Irwin, RIP, Vachi, William. Oh, this damn thing. Why does it do? It's this old phone. Storbus Corvin, who, uh, Gecko Kitsune, whoever else uh, is in here. Thanks for joining us on what is hopefully Malakalo Hall. Uh, a lovely weekend for you. Uh, it's a rainy day here. It's a rainy day Ooh, here in New Jersey. It is. Um, hi, it's back. It's a rainy Steve day, and the say. house smells like patchouli. Like, come on. Oh my God, Steve Irwin, look at that! It's a smelly old Maisie kind of weekend, by oh, the way. She was oh, pleased yeah, to see me, but is very tired after a big walk on the beach. That looks How great. Cute. What a cute dog! Maisie These stinks. Are the cutest animals, right? Maisie, yeah. It's a dog. Mm. It's supposed to stink. And doodle dogs stink real good. Uh, first things first. If you are in here and you are eagerly anticipating the trivia section, we will be doing that very soon. Just going to let people uh, give people a little bit more time to come in if they want in and play trivia. Here's what you got to do, though. If you're in the chat and you want to play trivia, please, in all capital letters, type I want to play trivia. And we will randomly select one person. And you will be playing uh, for the prize we didn't give away last time, which was uh, Pentiment. And uh, I still have V-Bucks as well, so we could do that. Uh, care what I think. Oh, my God, of course. Josh Grobot's here. Josh, what do you think? I am the world's best singer. Uh, I don't know that you think that. I think you, as we all do, know that. Thanks. Very cool. <laughs> you know what else is very cool? George. and Bangin. <laughs> George, how are you, my friend? Bon George, no. Uh, you have a good week? Anything fun? Anything uh, crazy going on? Hi, ball hop 999. Breezing and squeezing. <laughs> hanging so, and banging. Breezing and squeezing. <laughs> hanging and banging. Holy crap, that's great. Kurt Dog, hello. And oh my God, oh, I wasn't here last Barnaby. week. But it was Barnaby's birth slash gotcha day last week. Look at Barnaby. That's so cute. We love Barnaby. We love Barnaby. Oh my God, that's so great. Is Barnaby a close sniffer? Tony hello. Because my niece Stacey, dog hello. and Ramit's niece dog likes to sniff your your face really close. I think she's looking for food morsels, but it's just <laughs> so cute when she gets so close and gives you sniffles. I feel like Barnaby's got that kind of vibe. <laughs> Barnaby is such a good name. Love yeah, that it name. is good. Um, While you're giving shout outs, RMC, I'd like right to uh, uh, do our new segment, uh, We Speak Your Name, this week on We Speak Your Name. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, oh yeah, Radical Defect, Master Higgins, I'm speaking your name. Thank you very much for uh, the thing with the game and the place, and I'll never forget it. Um, so... So thank you, Radical Defect. Uh, I mean, I guess I could be a little bit more... I was going to say, it is <laughs> yeah. a video game podcast about Nintendo. So yeah, I was like trying to specific. keep it kind of mafioso. But, uh, Hi, Super Sanchez. But uh, Radical Defect was nice enough to get in touch with me and send me his well-loved uh, copy of uh, Mother 3 on the GBA. Hi, the Solomon English Link. translation. I guess it's a fan translation. Um, and I'm excited to dig into it. Uh, kind of got... A lot of RPG on my plate at the moment, uh, but I'm looking forward to giving it my full attention once that blows over. So, Radical Defect mas slash Master Higgins, we speak your name. Hi, Red Souza. I would like to air a grievance. Okay. Uh, one more time. If you're in here and you want to play trivia, or you want the chance to play trivia, type all capital letters, I want to play trivia. Go ahead, air your grievance. It's going to be interrupted, though. The grievance that I would like to air is that yesterday, not one person, not one person wished me happy international women's day i wished you some a happy something else mm, developmental disabilities month i thought mm -hmm. that was more important mm. there he is well we all know there everything is, is more important than women right oh so i would like to wish all of you happy international women's day a day late and happy women's history month uh, a little on the late side uh but you know well go ahead speak about women for a little bit tell me about women uh, in video it's games. not really my burden to to bear actually <clears throat> Uh, you should be educating yourself. Nice to see you. What time does this pod start nowadays? Sorry, I was... Uh, well, what, the time it's always started at 3.15. You said 3.30. I was like, oh, I guess he's busy. I didn't want to be like, you better get here sooner. You should have, because then I would have. <laughs> uh, yeah, you said 3 or you said 3.30. I was like, all right. Yeah, well, for some reason, enough. I had 3.45 in my head. Maybe... Oh, so he was early, technically. Yeah, because maybe, yeah, you know what? Because I think the last time... 
maybe Kirby was running a little late and we started at 345 because we were waiting for him or something. Never. Uh, not a thing. No. Kirby not well, running the last, late. <laughs> the last time we did a strange <laughs> time, the last time you came, it was a strange time because yeah. of the wrestling event. Yeah. Yes. And maybe it was true. a 30. Yeah. And you just put that yeah, together. You're getting old. You're but, losing it. But I'm here now, and that's what matters. You kept and the audience in suspense. Uh, they good, were go Nintendo <laughs> Podcast. I don't know what episode. Well, we're glad on. you're here. Thank you. And that's the show, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye. Um, Finally. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to give everybody just a couple more minutes. I see there's people who have already uh, said it. So, uh, I, don't worry. I'm keeping track. But if you want a chance to play trivia and you're in the Discord, type all capital letters. Oh, I want God. to play trivia, not you, Lube. Um, <laughs> but I want to play. Nope. Um, <laughs> no. Well, go ahead. Yeah, do it because I know how to exclude you from it, so it's fine. I won't. Uh, I mean, really I mean, you have just as much a chance as everybody else. You know, I'm not going to know any of the answers anyway. So it's like when they. Well, bake. how about this? You can play, but not until the actual player gives their answer, because then I'll be like, "They got it wrong." Do you know the answer, Lube? <laughs> I understand. It's like oh, when Marge bakes this. Homer a special a cake ladybug. for him to ruin. Y yes, exactly. Um, so I'll give you a couple minutes very quickly. Uh, Mombre, would you take a little bit? Would you like to talk about the uh, treat you had yesterday that has opened your eyes to something you had closed them to before? Oh, yeah. Um, so I'm not. We all know that I'm a big fan of ice cream. Right. But I am a little picky. I mean, very infrequently have I encountered ice cream that I've been like, no, I'm not happy. You know, I hate it. It's disgusting. But I do. I do have my preferences. And so Rami uh, tried to has been trying to uh, kind of work me up to trying Cold Stone Creamery because I'd had it a couple times before. And it really I don't remember anything exceptional about it besides the fact that it was really expensive. I haven't had it in for like I don't know the last time that I had it. It's been isn't cold stone decades like harder ice cream because of the cold stone. Yeah, or, or is it more? You're you're more of a soft guy. You're you'll you'll do a cold stone. Well, now that since the diet, I'll eat any ice cream he takes all the a cold time. Stone, so. No problem. <laughs> I think cold stone started out like that, where they were very regimented on we have hard ice cream on the cold stone, and now they're like ice cream. Like we walked yeah. in there and they had like a selection of like eight different chocolate covered apples you could buy like and no ice cream at all just there's something big about the colors the, the, the vibe the the fudge and the apples that they sell Apple. there's something about it that gives me the same like white supremacist vibes as cracker barrel does this like, is something i want to stress this mom brain is attributing this uh based on nothing but her own gut yeah, feeling like a vibe. it's just gut a vibe feeling. it's just a vibe there's just something about it that i'm like mm. um but I know nothing about their business practices, right? There's not, it's not like there's anything, you know, that I'm hanging this on besides the vibe. So I got, um, like still a, the second most conservative ice cream place you, you folks have been to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I got like a berry, it had like raspberries, strawberries, and blueberries with like sweet cream ice cream. That it sounds was nice. Yeah. It was delicious. Scale of one to 10. Uh, I give it a nine. That sounds great. There you go. Yeah. A nine. Yeah. We went through the same thing with Rita's. She used to like Rita's and she bowed out of Rita's. And I was like, let's try Rita's again and ended up really liking it. And now Cold Stone's back in there, baby. Maybe mm -hmm. that Cracker Barrel thinking ain't so stinking <laughs> after all. Oh, maybe. I got, uh, I got, what did I get? A Lucky Charms, something other limited time Lucky Charms mm -hmm. ice cream that they had. Phenomenal. That's good too. Here's yeah. a gripe I had. It was, it had whipped cream on it, but they, they, I like it when I can just eat the whipped cream by itself first because it's like one of my favorite parts and they kind of just like put a little on top and then they put the lid on and it squishes it down it's not like they put a big tall lid on it that gives room for the whipped cream which i didn't love but that's okay well yeah they got to account for the lid and the squishing and all that so it's that's a corporate issue not a you know for uh ice cream chef issue i don't know what you call them <laughs> but yes they could we all i a, mean a creamer the creamer, a creamer, a the cold cone creamer. Creamist. Uh, can I talk to your finest creamist, please? <laughs> so, um, yes, they did. Uh, our creamist did whipping a up a new job. batch right now. <laughs> Just hang on. The creamist is busy. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we had two women for International Women's Day as our creamists, who so were so. probably being paid less than the men that the, weren't working. The that one night. girl was like, 
deer in headlights. Like I, it was almost like we were the first order she had ever taken ever there. Um, because everything we said to her, she was just like, it was like she had never heard it. Do before. we have ice cream? Yeah, she was like, <laughs> Mom Brain was like, we have an order for and said our names, and she goes, huh? And Mom Brain was like, a, mo a mobile order. We did a mobile order. And she goes, oh. And then, like, looked at the girl next to her and then looked around the whole store with, like, giant eyes. Poor things probably, and then, like, like, training or something. Yeah, then, like, shuffled a little bit, turned around and, like, went over to the, the fridge and opened it. And s but then, like, looked in the at the receipt yeah. and then looked in the bag. And, like, I appreciate wanting to be thorough, but, like, it was definitely not she because did, she was being thorough. It was because she had no She did clue. everything oh, no. to make you think that the order was either wrong or poisoned. Like, it was one of those. <laughs> she but... hands me the bag and he's like, do you trust it? And I was like, no, I'm looking inside yeah. right now. Like, but it was right and it was great. So. Yeah. All right, Mom Brain, give me a number one through seven. Four. Four. All right. The lady for International Women's month day yesterday was day it's women's history month but uh for the month says four so let me get in here and do what i'm gonna do uh one two three four today our trivia player is tony de la mancha that is correct <laughs> congratulations tony i am private i am direct messaging you Woo. right now let's play <laughs> trivia what rules, you sons Please of bitches? Message me when you're it was in ready. June this year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love how specific that is. I and it always it. works. <laughs> it always gets was me. It like a paintbrush? Is that what he <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but it's the way it's said, it's like yeah. fashioned into something akin to a, a artist paintbrush. <laughs> it's not right, but it's something close to that. All right, hit me with it. Oh, wow. Tony de la Mancha is ready. They say, just beat a boss in Prince of Persia. Let's go. Well, congratulations. Hit me with that jingle. Let's get to trivia. It's time for trivia. Tony right, de la Mancha. What rules, you sons of bitches? Tony de la Mancha is our contestant for today. Here are the rules. Here's how it works. All right. Get rid of that music. I want to make sure Tony hears. Tony, five questions. Every question you get correct is a chance at winning the prize. Today's prize is uh, Pentiment on Switch, the ex former Xbox exclusive now available on the Switch. If you win, you get Pentiment. Um, like I said, if you get an answer correct, that gives you a chance to win. At the end of the game, we will roll a virtual dice. It will give you one through six. The numbers correspond to the questions you got correct. So if you got questions one, three, and five correct, then if we roll a one, three, or five, you win. But also, if we roll a six, that's an automatic win. So you get a bonus chance to win even if you answer every question wrong. All right, Tony, we got five questions for you. Please type your answer in the Discord. Mom Brain, are you ready with question music and all that jazz? You have until the end of the question music to answer. Best of luck to you. Question Good luck. one. To me. Question one. What method of traversal does the main character in Bionic Commando use? Uh, How does the main character in Bionic Commando get around? Because they can't jump. What do they do? What does that Bionic Commando do? Getting nothing from Tony so far. Oh, he's typing. The answer is going to be locked in, so we are good. Tony's answer, ladders. That is incorrect. That is incorrect. I'm sorry. Uh, Lube? Uh, doesn't he have some sort of like grappling hook bionic arm I, thing? I would have accepted both Very of those nice. answers, yes. Bionic Hell arm yeah. or grappling hook, yes. Any, anything would have worked. It's okay, Tony. <clears throat> it's only one. The doctors that gave him that implant you think he could have been like, I can't jump. And they could have been like, all right, let's do the legs while we're at it. <laughs> I'm thinking arm, maybe. Uh, well, I don't know the exact story of Bionic Commando. I know he's fighting against Hitler. So maybe a Nazi doctor gave him the arm. I don't know. But hmm. I know he I know he literally explodes Hitler's face at the end of the game. Like you wow. see Hitler's face explode. <clears throat> Wow. And an eyeball uh -huh. goes flying and out. Might I add? Eat your heart out, yeah, Wolfenstein. I've, I've never played that game, but I know I've seen like plenty of clips of it. And I know that's like the one thing I know is like you, you go and you swing on your that's arm. That's the main 
Hook. <laughs> All right, uh, Tony, we got question two. What was the name of the bazooka-like accessory Nintendo released for the Super Nintendo? So the NES had the zapper. What did the Super Nintendo have made by Nintendo? Tony is typing. Tony seemed to be typing quickly. They have said the Super Scope. That is correct. That is correct, Tony. Ooh, That's ooh, one ooh. right. Lube, your job is to remember what questions he gets right. That's Super question scope. two. Number two. Number two. <laughs> yes, the Super Scope, which had like, I don't know, two games, three games, or is it was Super Scope six? Battle Clash. That was like the cartridge that came, came with, with it that it. had yeah, like okay. little mini games yeah. in it. Yeah. Now, could the Super Scope, is that the one that could be dissembled and used in different ways, or it was just one one way? I just on was, the shoulder and you shot. Thing, yeah, that was yeah. it. Oh, Ice Dilbert says, my mom called it, you don't need that. Well, <laughs> nice. I, you know what? Your mom was right because not a lot of games use it. And then Sega was like, but we've got the Menacer, and guess what? Even fewer games <laughs> i think it was the same games roughly that a same amount of games that used it but yeah not exactly uh it's kind of a shame the that they didn't that generation didn't utilize it because i remember using the zapper yeah. back in the day and being like this is like next level like and a lot of games, cooler than shooting at the screen there were a lot of games that ducks. used it so uh yeah also the know. the satisfying click i loved it like, yeah. it's so good yeah it really did feel tactile this ah. shows how old we are and how young everybody else is. <laughs> Tony knew that answer because of Smash Brothers. Because it's a weapon Fair. in Smash Brothers. Fair. Yeah. Uh, all Smash right. Brothers keeping the classics alive. Question mm -hmm. number three. What game did Waluigi make his debut in? Waluigi's been around for a long time now, but there was an era where he didn't exist. We didn't know anything of him. And then this game came out and introduced Waluigi to the world. What game was it? Tony is typing. They say Mario Tennis. That is correct. That is correct. Mario Tennis. Yes, on a 64. Don't worry. I would have given it to you anyway. But Mario Tennis on a 64. That's correct. It introduced the world wow. to Waluigi. And we all fell in love that day. So <laughs> congratulations. Two and three correct. Number four. Oh, my God. <laughs> Number four. Project Rainfall was a fan movement during the Wii era to get three specific games localized. It's a big campaign. Can you name two of those three games? So Nintendo fans here in America were very upset that three specific games weren't getting localized. And they started a fan movement. I don't know that we've seen the likes of which ever since. And Nintendo says, we heard you guys, but it's not why we localize these games. But oddly enough, all three of those games ended up getting localized. So, uh, two games that Tony says are Xenoblade Chronicles and The Last Story. That is correct. That is correct. That's two of the three. And yes, you are right. I see you typing the third. The third was Pandora's Tower. All of those got localized. Pandora in tomorrow. So, you got two, three, and four correct. This is your final question. Five. What does Nintendo call the haptic feedback technology? Inside the Switch Joy Cons. So, you know, when you feel things when you play with the controllers, that has a, Nintendo has a very specific name for that on the Switch. What is that called? Tried to give you questions that run a gamut of the early days up to right now. We'll see. Tony is typing. Tony says HD Rumble. John. That is correct. That is correct. Another Ooh. one correct. So, you did great, Tony. Literally. The only way you can wow, lose is this is if we roll a one. Wow. So you need two, three, four, five, or six, and that'll be a win. Mom Brain is gonna bear witness. Mom Brain, please yeah. announce the number that gets rolled. Are you ready? I'm ready. Scroll the pentinent. He rolled. Ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between, he rolled a four! Congratulations. You got it. Uh, you're, so the um, Operation Rainfall was the one that won it for you. Congratulations, Tony. I will get in touch 
sometime later today with your code for Pentiment. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> great. That great. That's a great <laughs> Uh, we're very happy to give you that prize. Um, we have big prizes coming down the pipeline. More game codes. Uh, that's right. We're working with different companies to get you codes for the biggest, best, most exciting games. So look forward to that. As I said, we got some V-Bucks to give away, too, at some point. We're going to have to do some Now Lou really wants to play. <laughs> uh, I would have I would have lost. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, when I'm putting together the questions, I want to, I don't, I don't want to make them extremely hard, but I don't want to make them very easy. I think I it was I'd good. Go it was a nice mix. And yeah, it was I go a throughout big Nintendo timeline. history. Yeah. And, yeah. I try and fit a little bit of everything in there. Uh, you're right, Red Souza. That's exactly what it is. One day I'll have like a whole podium to stand behind and we'll have fancy lights and everything. Uh, never played the last story. Is it any good? Says Storbus Corbin. Uh, I still own it and I never played it because that was a time when. I was afraid of RPGs, but I wasn't not going to buy that game because it was a big part of Operation Rainfall. So I own it. Maybe I should get around to it. Um, wow. So that's that. We did it. Congrats. I love when we give something away to a winner. And you're the winner today, Tony. Uh, didn't have any other topics, so I'm going to get to the Patreon stuff. You can join the Patreon for a dollar. But here's what I talked about this for week. For a dollar. On Sweet Patreon. dollar. For a dollar. Uh, what did I talk about this week? I posted about how, believe it or not, we are officially in the seventh year of the Switch. We hit the Switch's seventh anniversary. Uh, it's still selling incredibly well. The anniversary was, what, the third or the fourth? Something like that. Uh, Tony, that's great. Tony says they've been here since 2007. A fan since 2007. And look, all it took was over a decade for you to win one $15 game. I don't know how much it Pentiment is, but thank you for being here. Um, yeah, seven years with the Switch, which is crazy. And there's big things still coming out and uh, surprises down the line. And uh, it's just crazy. So I talked about how, uh, how it's been seven years filled with awesome games and how crazy it is that Nintendo followed the, up the Wii U with the success of the Switch, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I also talked about making friends online that become real life friends, which hasn't happened for us at the table, but I know it happens with other people. And you guys on Patreon gave me some of the best stories, like people that were like, I met somebody online playing whatever, and then they were in my wedding party as a groomsman. Like, oh, wow. they, like <laughs> then there were multiple stories about people uh, like I played random. I forget what the games were, but people playing stuff online. And then becoming friends through the game, and then meeting up in real life, and then uh, having Stranger them come to danger. big events. And uh, yes, obviously, I'm not going to tell you how to uh, handle your own personal safety, but yes, uh, you're not going to want to meet somebody in the game this week and go meet them next week. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, some really cool stories. Uh, people said they made lifelong friends that way. So that's it. We know a friend, or we have a friend in real life who made a friend online and. They flew him out to visit. Uh, I don't know if they're still friends, but I know that happened. But yeah, yeah, it was a surprising amount of people who uh, responded to this post saying that, that that happened to them. There are a couple that are like, I have met friends online in games that I play with all the time, but still haven't met in person, but are planning to. But yeah, that's uh, one of the friends we play with now. He and I were playing just the two of us the other night and we were uh, chatting and uh, then we decided to hop online and play. <laughs> and then, um, but yeah, he was telling me uh, that he had he was into doing that kind of thing, like uh, where he would just try to meet people playing a game. And he met he ended up meeting uh, a stranger and then a, another one and another one. And he kind of like was the Hannibal to these guys. He like put together this team. Hannibal oh, from the A team. Hannibal, <laughs> yeah, Hannibal from yeah. the A team. I was getting really excited. Uh, yeah. Them. So he's like Hannibal. Yeah, he ate them all. He lulled them, had them in for with dinner. a false sense of security and then he ate them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, so he, so he was telling me about that. And then he said that was, you know, destiny like years ago. And then he said, but he still will, will see two of those guys who he technically introduced who were strangers to each other and to him oh. playing online, like <laughs> different games, like together. And he's, and it kind of gives him, he's like, it's been a few, it's been a few years since like I've joined at a party with those guys, but it's cool to see that they're like playing together and yeah. that they met because I, you know, cause I was playing with them. So hi Roth. He was a, uh, he was the matchmaker that, that stuff's really awesome. I love that. Uh, 
Online gaming can do that. Yes, online can be very uh, nasty and horrible, but it can also be great as long as you, you know, are lucky enough to find good people. And then you, st I, I know there's a lot of people who in real life play a ton of games, but don't have others around them who play games. So they don't have like friends they know in person to play online with. We're all lucky that we know a good amount of people who play online. Um, so that has some people turn to just playing with strangers and some of them become friends. So that's awesome. I talked about that. Um, talked about Ubisoft because what did uh, their whole situation with a game comes out and then like two weeks later it's like thirty percent off, and then two weeks later after that it's like seventy percent off. Uh, I they have taught consumers not to buy their games at launch because you can get a major discount uh, a month, if not less than a month, when uh, after a game comes out. So I, I I don't understand how Ubisoft turns this around. Like it would take years of uh, what do you, what do you call that? Uh, opposite of brainwashing. Deprogramming. Deprogramming. Uh, there we go. Years of deprogramming to get people to not believe that anymore because you yeah. know games are expensive and they're only going to get more expensive if somebody's like, you know, I don't want to pay seventy bucks for a game. I could wait a month and get it for thirty-five bucks or forty bucks. Then that's what they're going to do. Yeah. And Ubisoft has created that mentality more than any other company that I can think of. Whereas you know Nintendo's the exact opposite. People are always like, these games never drop in price. And well, Nintendo is probably like, well, look at what happened to Ubisoft. Their games drop prices right. all the time, and now people just wait to buy them. Uh, I was talking about it because just in this week alone, uh, Prince of Persia saw like a thirty percent discount, and Skull and Bones saw like a thirty five percent discount. And Didn't Skull and Bones came out like out? two weeks ago. Yeah, it just came out. I saw somebody on Patreon. I forgive me, I don't remember who said it, but they had an interesting idea. They were like, maybe Ubisoft already knows that their games aren't going to sell as strongly as they want, so they put them out. For a couple of weeks at the high price to get like the fans that are going to buy them no matter right. what and then they bump it down to the lower price to woo more people in and i'm like uh, you know they maybe got, at they this got point me on the prince of persia lost crown and it was i mean you're one of the few uh multiple retailers like amazon and best buy and something else have it for uh like i said 30 percent off or something like man should have waited but uh that's that's the way it is. I, I don't know what they're going to do to turn things around. Uh, obviously, it's going to hurt their bottom line, and you don't want to train your customers to wait to buy your games, but that's where they are. Right well, now. I told you um, that I was on Amazon, and I saw that Resident Evil 4 remake for PS5 was 40 bucks. So yeah. I was like, I was like, what the heck? I'll pull the trigger. So I ordered it, and literally the next day on Amazon, it was 30 bucks. <laughs> and I was like, what the heck? So I uh, I had to call Amazon and I was like, can you just refund me $10 instead of going through the hoopla of like returning what comes in the mail and having to rebuy the new one? And I wrote you know, the, the just like the logistics of it don't seem to make sense when you could just refund me $10 and they couldn't do that. So I had to return the old one and get the new one and just to save 10 bucks and probably... I, I mean, it's not like I'm playing the game anytime soon. It was just like a deal that I hopped on. But that's a relatively new game for $30. Yeah. I mean, I know Blades, no bows. Uh, yeah, by the time you end up getting to play it, the re-remake will probably be out. Yeah, I probably should have waited, right? There's going to be another and another, I'm sure another and another. Uh, have, you have a great day too, Rosemary. Whatever you're doing, hope it's a wonderful time. Uh, so I talked about that. I talked about uh, Jujutsu Kaisen more. Um, I know I know I talked about it last week on the podcast, but I finished up the first season and I watched a movie. You can read me gushing about that anime if you want over on Patreon. Really, really liked it. Um, talked about a Go Nintendo secret. Now, I let the Patreon people know the secret But I've first. seen everything. I'll let you guys know now. It's not a big deal. I'll let you guys know now, and then I'll I'll mention it to the greater Go Nintendo readers on social media, maybe like in a month or something. Just a fun little thing. Mom Brain will uh, confirm that I'm a big fan of like Easter eggs and secrets and like See, little hidey things. True. Love it. So I've been. But you know what's weird is he hates surprises, right? He likes like little hidden secrets to discover, but he hates a surprise. In fact. You may not know this, but as a very young child, uh, he asked for Santa Claus to not wrap his gifts. So he had unwrapped gifts under the tree Christmas morning. Just like blow your load all at once. Just walk out there and there's my gifts. 
I I didn't ask Santa to not wrap gifts. I didn't care. I never. This is a false story. Santa just didn't wrap your gifts. Yeah. That's it. That's all. He didn't. Did he your sister's of... gifts get wrapped? No. No one else's gifts got wrapped. Well, no. should I be worried about Santa? He, he, well, he ran out of paper <laughs> wrapping all yours. That's just, true. Didn't do it like you know, or I mean, we didn't open wrap gifts. But for as Santa. a child, Santa as a child though, like. Like as a small child, no, we're not talking like when you're a teenager. N- no, oh yeah, that's huh, okay. right. So I guess it explains. You know, because it explains. Yeah. Something. <laughs> Can I? I won't push back at all. I just want to hear why this is so surprising to you guys. I mean, bring it up with Santa first. Have off, you but... ever heard of any child uh, with a like with a, cr- who celebrated Christmas that didn't get wrapped presents? I've never mm-hmm. heard of that. No. Uh, yeah, I, I I know that. I've heard that. You have? Did yeah. you have unwrapped presents too? Or? No, I always had wrapped presents. Um, but my wife's friends from South Carolina, when they were growing up, probably because their parents were poor, but I don't want to, I don't want to say that without knowing all that. But they would just put all the presents in Walmart bags and just. What do you tie mean, them parents? Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. I don't understand. That's parents. totally fine. You know, yeah. like because for Why me, it's the. Why did you say parents? I I don't know. You, you mean, mean Santa? Santa. Oh, well, yeah, I guess Santa got his gifts at Walmart. Because Spud, yeah. Spud's <laughs> probably listening. We don't want to ruin it for Spud. Um, that's okay. In a Walmart bag, fine. It conceals the gift. Like, the point is, I want gifts to be wrapped. Romy, were there at least, like, were there, like, a little bow on it or anything? Or just nothing at all? Nothing. Yeah, whatever. I mean, I... mean, I, 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 I Kudos to Santa for being uh, thrifty. Well, I mean, like, here's the deal. I wrote a letter to Santa telling him what I wanted. So that's what I got. It wasn't like a surprise <laughs> Santa, that I was getting I want, it. And I get what I want. <laughs> so that was, I didn't ask for a lot of things. I was like, give me super Mario two. And I don't know, a Nerf gun. And then that's what it was. So it's a good Christmas. Um, probably Santa was so, I know Santa doesn't make the NES or the super Nintendo. So he had to buy those and probably those were so expensive. Santa was like, I don't want to spend money on garbage that he's just going to throw away yeah. after this. <laughs> just yeah, Santa, did, Santa didn't want to worry about the cleanup afterwards. <laughs> Santa also just rest after his long journey. Santa also always stuck a uh, orange in the ball. And let us be clear, stocking. Mrs. Like Claus the... had nothing to do with that. It was, it was it, all Santa. It was all Santa. Yeah, there was always an orange. And every year I'd be like, but I don't eat oranges. Why does Santa always give me these? Santa and you. My dad was like, I'll have them. Don't worry. So uh, <laughs> interesting. But Santa also gave me nuts, apparently butt nuts sometimes. But <laughs> Santa gave me nuts. That's where the butt nut came from. Um, yes, no wrapped presents from Santa for me. But apparently that's that's uh, very disturbing or upsetting to some here. I apologize. No, it's no, just, it doesn't I, I just it a fun I, fact. I actually never knew that fun fact. It doesn't. Well, it's, you know. Yeah, I I didn't. I don't want you to take my shock for disturbed. Uh, is it is it weird that my parents wrap the groceries we got every week? We had to unbox them. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. Uh, in in contrast, oh boy, well, I mean, you'd be, you'd be happier unwrapping yeah, a pizza. Yeah, you know, you would. Helios. That's true. I. One year for Christmas, do you, do you guys remember when it was real cool and like popular for people to give gifts inside balloons, like clear balloons? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got the Mr. <laughs> like a boy and a girl velveteen rabbit Whoa. stuffed animal, two balloons from the Easter Bunny? No, from Santa because they were dressed in Christmas clothes. Oh. So it was like they're in cahoots. Yeah. And I will never they ever, run, they run definitely, in the same circles. Yeah. Yeah. I'll never forget how like amazed I was to like see see them inside the balloons under the tree like holy cow and and i only now as an adult can acknowledge that like santa didn't have like a butt ton of cash at the time and like mrs claus was like working extra hours to On make only sure fans, yeah yeah, I had velveteen rabbits <laughs> in balloons underneath the tree. So. Working the pole on OnlyFans. <laughs> Working the candy cane. I don't think Mrs. Claus was on OnlyFans back she was. then. I don't she think was. you should back say then? that Ask about her. Mrs. Claus. <laughs> Why I, not? I, because it's not nice. Women empowerment. Oh, that is true. It's her own business. She's yeah. not doing it for somebody else. The woman's body is beautiful. How dare you imply that the only way for Mrs. Claus to make good money is by selling her body? No, 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 no. I didn't imply that. I said it's a fact she did it. You're the one that's thinking. You it's know that for a fact. Yeah. Cite me your. Do can you talk to your spiders and flies? 
I believe I can. <laughs> I talk to them every week. It's claws on the horn. <laughs> Intimately. Um, so, yes, my presents weren't wrapped uh, by Santa because he didn't have time. But I've seen everything. <laughs> Uh, moving. <laughs> oh, yeah, the secret. The whole reason we started. So the secret. Uh, I've been doing a thing on Go Nintendo where I. Uh, so when we post news stories, I save my opinion for like reviews and features and things like that. When I'm posting news stories, there might be like a sentence in there or something that is slightly of opinion, but it's usually just fact based or news based in general. But every once in a while, there's something I would like to share a stupid thought about, and. I do that, and you might not have noticed it, and I'm giving you the heads up now. There are random stories. I usually do one or two a day where I'll leave a special hyperlink on one of the letters or the punctuation marks or whatever. And if you click it, you'll be taken to a paste bin page that has like my personal thoughts on something, just whatever it is. I can't, I'm not going to say anything because then I'll spoil where the stuff is hidden. But there's been four or five this week. So if you're an eagle-eyed reader of Go Nintendo, you might be like, why is that letter A pink? That means it's hyperlinked. Or why is that exclamation point pink? And if you click it, you'll find a hidden thought for me. So again, nothing major, nothing important, but just some little fun. And it helps me keep my sanity when I'm doing the news all day. So uh, and keep remember, an eye out for that. Stuff. Don't click them while you're at work. No, no, no. They're <laughs> totally safe. It is only text. There's no ads, Just no like text, no pictures. No ultra nothing. white right wing propaganda <laughs> yeah, right. or something. Uh, and here's my get out of my office. You know what? I'm not even going to say anything. Uh, no, just white background, black text, like a paragraph about whatever. So if you're looking to hunt those down, enjoy. Uh, I talked about Unicorn Overlord, which came out this week I or came out yesterday. I have not played it yet. There is a demo. It's from publisher Atlas and developer VanillaWare. VanillaWare has done award-winning games like 13 Sentinels. I believe this is their follow-up game uh, to that. But um, it's something I want to play. I know it's going to be so um, intricate and detailed and layered, and it's an RPG. And, you know, that's kind of... It's not that it's scary i play rpgs now but i know there's going to be a lot and at first i'm going to be like i don't understand what's going on so oh wow look at that the picture that's funny um so as i've said before every week when i work on go nintendo i open up youtube and youtube uh puts together a playlist of music it thinks i will like and i get songs i've heard and songs i haven't heard and this week i or sometime earlier this week i open up my playlist and let it let it do its thing and i heard a song and I was like, what is this amazing song from? And I clicked over to the tab to see. And it's from Unicorn Overlord. It's an incredible song. It's called uh, it's called Come Foul Demon. It's called oh. Lick My Love Pump. Um, so if you look that up on YouTube, you can hear the song. It's so good. It's uh, I wrote about it on Patreon saying it's like um it's like what you hear in an anime when the stakes are really high and the action's getting really intense or like there's a really important fight going on. Like that amazing song and Attack on Titan in the finale. Like that's it's that kind of stuff. Or And uh, it's got like great vocals and just a great uh, like driving force with the instruments to it. It's great for a boss battle, which apparently it's used for. So I was like, this is even more motivation for me to check out this game. I'm going to download the demo this week and see if I can figure out my way through it, I have a feeling I'm going to struggle, but I am going to try. So the game is out now. We have a review coming. Um, there's a free demo the on the Switch eShop. So it's fun. Check it out or just listen to that song if you want. Uh, and then, unfortunately, the only other thing I talked about was the very sad news of Akira Toriyama passing away, which is just holy crap, man. Like, talk about... There are certain people who are influential and there's people who their creations go so far beyond what other people is, have done. Is that the Dragon Ball Z guy? Toriyama is the Dragon yeah. Ball guy. Yeah. He yeah. made the manga, drew the art, was yeah. involved with the anime. And I didn't realize how old that stuff was. I didn't know it was around in like the 80s he yeah. started that stuff. That's crazy. Yeah, he had um he started a he did one manga that was a flop completely. Like I believe. For the year that he put it out. I don't remember what it was called. But that year, it was literally the least purchased manga uh, uh, <laughs> that year. And he was like, uh, but he, he's like, I'm not going to let it kill me. And he spent like a year writing 500 pages of some other manga idea that he had. Put that out. And that also flopped. 
and somebody was like don't stop he's like you're like your stuff will find an audience like there's something to it and you're a talented artist and then he did uh a manga called dr slump and that became a huge hit and that paved the way for dragon ball and then dragon yeah. ball uh like dragon ball it's unbelievably influential to this day people in traditional movies and tv shows uh the creators i have been so greatly influenced by the stuff that's in dragon ball uh character arcs and uh styles of storytelling and how action is shown and like uh, it's not an overstatement by any means toriyama's work has reached so far and influenced so many you couldn't even count the amount of people and his art style is unbelievably distinctive you know toriyama's work as soon as you see it toriyama did dragon ball obviously but he made art for so many games every dragon quest game has artwork by toriyama that's why it looks just like dragon ball there's a uh, chrono trigger chrono triggers artwork was done by toriyama he did the characters or caricatures of all the characters in that game he his style is just so ingrained in so many things and influenced so many people and he's unfortunately gone he was working on he's got a, a sandland a game called sandland coming out which is based on an anime I, i'm sure and i believe a manga as well and that's coming out in like a couple weeks or something um but any anime out there today and any manga out there today no not any but the vast majority and like i said american cinema our tv and movies and all that so much influence from what he did it's staggering he was Dragon Ball is like the anime that people watched and those people didn't like anime. Like they don't know anything about anime. They never touched anime <laughs> again after that, but Dragon Ball they know and continue to watch this day and absolutely love. It was a major 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 breakthrough. Without anime or without Dragon Ball, uh, Dragon Ball was a hit in Japan of course, but Dragon Ball broke through just as big here at a time when if you were watching anime like you weren't watching it on TV. You saw like Pokemon and stuff like that. Um, but it was so hard to find anime in stores. Like you couldn't just go into your local retailer that sold VHS at that time. And we're like, give me the latest anime. That didn't happen. Stuff didn't get localized. And if it did, it was like really big budget movies. And still then it was hard to find. And like anime was looked at as the weird thing that the weird kids watched. And we're all weird still but that's good but anime nowadays is like it's the biggest thing on netflix crunchyroll is humongous it's in the top 10 streaming services in the world like anime is here to stay without a doubt and dragon ball was the first real breakthrough we all watched anime when we were kids we just didn't know we were watching gi joe and thundercats and stuff and like that. the strawberry shortcake the one that we just strawberry shortcake that's right <laughs> the one that we my just little pony rediscovered the oh yeah what, what's the name of Was that it show Grimm's though? fairy tale Grimm's fairy tale maya the bee maya the bee's an anime yeah all the all the what stuff the we watch is koala noozles mm, i don't think so i do think so mm, there was another <laughs> one he like lived in her tree in a tree outside oh, a girl's yeah, room sure gummy bears noozles. i'm pretty sure i'm gonna stake my life on that gummy thing. bears noozles. lived in a tree can i sing you the song do, 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 Tell me do, 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 noozles. Yeah, yeah, I know that, but I don't think that was it. You're right. It's another anime from our childhood with a koala bear that lived in a tree. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I love noozles. Yeah, uh, me too. And they could like disappear and reappear whenever yeah, they wanted. Yeah. Yep. Um, so yes, yeah, so much of our, our childhood, so koala thousands noodles. of years ago, they're koala bears from <laughs> outer space. Know. It looks exactly like koala know. bear. It must have been kids with I was, Oh, it was cable. It was Nickelodeon. <laughs> was it? Okay. <laughs> I was. I have no idea what you're talking. I thought about. I just didn't remember something that I should have remembered, and I was yeah. like, maybe I'll just stay out of this one. But I usually thank apologize. Goodness. I'm sorry. We're talking cable yeah. again. Yes, here we go. Anime. You watched as a kid and you didn't know it was anime. Heathcliff. That's an anime. Oh man. Uh, Terrorizing that neighborhood. That's right. Yeah. Like, uh, no like one no should. one ever should. I don't. I Heathcliff always annoyed me. I don't know why. I have no idea. Because Garfield's the right answer. Of course. That's right. That's mm -hmm. why. But I had nothing against Heathcliff, but I, I mean, mean, he's no Garfield. Garfield had staying power for sure. And I love Garfield. I don't know if I don't know if there's like anything active Heathcliff right now. I saw the coolest damn Heathcliff oh, shirt yeah. with whatever the girl cat was from Heathcliff. Oh, it was so awesome. Just can't bring myself to buy it. It's like 40 bucks. That's so good. Uh, but yeah, anime as a kid, we watched. We didn't know it was anime and it certainly wasn't looked at as anime. Dragon Ball was the one where it was very clearly anime, but it was a hit. 
you watch that. I watched that before I went to high school in the morning and watched it again when I got home from school on Toonami, which I was just saying on Patreon. Hurt Dog says The Adventures of the Little Koala. Well, look it up. Is that what you're thinking of? Um, so uh, Toriyama's impact will forever be felt like that's a lasting impact for the rest of time. We're not going to get away from that because his work influenced others with things that are popular now, and that work will influence others. So his the impressions that he made through Dragon Ball and his other works will be here for the rest of time. That's it. So his even if you don't know the man's name and never heard the man's name, you've seen his stuff and you know how big it is. Yeah. This is the one you watch? I think so. I remember that one too. Yeah, I remember the penguin. Well, he's eating ice cream. Well, how that, could you I not? bet you would have loved that. You love a good, like, <laughs> sexy furry. <laughs> It's just a regular bunny. I would she disagree got big with that. Eyelashes and glitter coming off her hair. That's how you know it's a girl. Mm. That's it. Eyelashes. Mm. No, uh, I'm a Minerva Mink fan. Thank you. And that is not anime. Um, so yeah, rest in peace, Tori. I'm a 68 years old, died of a subdural subdural hematoma. So uh, left us far too early, but his work will live on forever. Um, man, like I remember watching Dragon Ball on TV. And being blown away that it was on regular TV. I'm like, because I knew about anime and I was like, I can't believe they're showing this. And it's on like, it was on, I used to watch it on uh, nine. Yeah, w, maybe I, I never, I never watched Dragon Ball. I never got into it. In, wow. in the morning I watched it and uh, like I got into it right away. And like a week later I had a shirt and I was like, this is the coolest thing in the world. And it, it was like, you know, what happened on Dragon Ball this week? Oh, uh, it was five episodes of somebody uh, charging up for a fight. It'd just be like, you know, Literally 20 minutes of somebody like growing their power, and then you're like, This fight's gonna be amazing. Um, but yeah, it was you know, it opened the it opened the door for a lot of people to get into anime. But obviously, like I said, there's millions other who have no interest in anime at all, but they love Dragon Ball. So big deal. Rest in peace, Toriyama. That news sucks and was very surprising. But that's what I talked about on Patreon. You can read more about all that stuff, everything I mentioned if you would like, but if not, that's fine. Too. For a dollar. For a dollar. Um, oh, I was going to ask if anybody else has anything they'd like to talk about before we get to news. We could do that. But... <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to news. Play it. Thank you, Mom Rain. For the news train, uh, there weren't too many top stories this week, but we're starting off one with I think I'm just going to pass the phone over to Mom Brain. To let her uh, enjoy this. You can read along and tell us the story. <clears throat> I really wish I had the theme song playing in the background. We would get claimed. Twin Peaks oh. co thank you. Co-creator. <laughs> Just <laughs> you. Oh, no, wow. No, no. Yeah. What I and I whatever I, I don't I don't watch things a million times. So I'm giving you what I got. I share a bed with you. No, you don't. <laughs> Not anymore. You don't. We don't sleep in the same bed. I share my bed with you if you want it. I wouldn't share sure. my bed with anybody yeah, else. Yeah, but there's a lot of rules. You can't eat in the bed. Don't get in with your street clothes. You only wrap street presents. Street clothes. <laughs> yeah, you. If you wore it outside, you can't wear it to bed. It's against the rules. That's been mom's brain rule for a long time. It's true. I know. Yeah. I know the rules, so I play by them. But yeah. I think there's only one person in this world who's ever violated that rule and lived to tell the tale. And they're not on the podcast anymore. <laughs> and they're not here. <laughs> yeah. um, so, uh, uh, Twin Peaks uh, co-creator uh, met with Nintendo to share ideas for Zelda Link's Awakening. So we knew that Nintendo was inspired by Twin Peaks when making Link's Awakening. But about a year ago, we learned that they actually, the co-creator of Twin Peaks, Mark Frost, actually met with Nintendo in person to talk about multiple things, including their love of Twin Peaks and how Twin Peaks was going to influence Zelda Link's Awakening. So if you scroll down to the bottom, oh, I was okay. there's an update. Well, the original story is old, but I did okay. the update. So um, the original story talks about a tweet from co-creator Mark Frost. Uh, and then the update says 10 months after his initial comments, Frost had a chat with The Verge. That's a website where he shares more insight about his meeting with Nintendo. Would you like me to read the quote? Yes, this is a quote from Mark Frost about him meeting with Nintendo and talking about Zelda. Uh, while I have a, a mountain of respect for Mark Frost, I wish that David Lynch had said this so that we could hear 
David Lynch speaking this, but anyway. Um, what the hell? <laughs> um, Morons everywhere. I was just thinking. What's the one about Albert the, Einstein? The Coca Cola. I just Something had a I just Coca-Cola? had a cookie and a yeah. Coca Cola. <laughs> They were talking to me about a Twin Peaks game and they mentioned Zelda at the time. They said, one of the things we love about your show is how there's all sorts of sideways associations that can drive the story forward. They asked me about that as they were thinking about expanding the Zelda universe. I think I said, don't be afraid to use dreamlike Jungian symbolism. Things can connect thematically without having to connect concretely. It was things like that that I was urging them to consider. Thank you, Mom Brain. And yes, obviously, if you've played Link's Awakening, dreams certainly tie into the game uh, quite a bit. I won't say any more than that in case you haven't played it, but uh, dreams are part of it. Uh, so it's just cool. I, I'm, I would love the chance to pick Mark Frost's brain. Uh, about anything. I don't ever. have the pull of The Verge, obviously, and they were talking to him about uh, other things as well, but. It's just really cool that he's willing to talk about it more because Nintendo will never talk about it. They're just going to be like, well, our developers love Twin Peaks. Oh, really? Tell us more. No. So Mar- <laughs> the keys of the kingdom are with Mark Frost and he's opening up a bit more about it. The Verge. Uh, is he the guitarist for you too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's the edge, but he is on the verge of dying. Uh, PT. Is that and- true? They're old. It's all you two. They're oh, all just because of, of yeah. Yeah. just because of the age. I thought. How old is it? somebody? Look up how old Bono is. Man, I just I saw a that picture old. of Bono. I know we're, we're digressing, but man, no, he no, looks bro. awful. Really looks terrible. He's on the edge. Yeah, I mean, I he thought Bono's only sixty three. Yeah, I thought they were gonna be. Bono wow. is sixty three. Look at Bono. He looks like he's really? ninety three. He looks so. He strikes me as one of those like the edge is 62. yoga dudes. That, you know, you you'd think he'd take care of himself. Maybe not. Uh, he's 62, he's so they're right around the same age. You know, you can't help it. And just for completion's sake, Edge is 50 years old. Not related <laughs> to you two. But we got Bono, The Edge, and Edge. Um, wow, that's first comic the one I saw. comes from PT, and it says, you listen to this, Mom, right? mm-hmm. PT says, Zelda, 11.30 a.m., February 24th, <laughs> entering Island of Koholan, five miles south of the Herulean border, 12 miles west of Termina Line. Never seen so many cuckoos in my life. That's beautiful. really good. Very That's nice. Really good. Uh, yeah, you know, it'd be cool if uh, they actually made a real legit Twin Peaks game. I think that would be amazing. There's Deadly Premonition, which is one quadrillion percent influenced mm-hmm. by uh, how many Twin percent? Peaks. I can't put an actual percentage on it. I can't say 50. I can't say 68. I don't know, but. How about uh, greatly? Influenced. How about a quadrillion then? Uh, a quadrillion, yes. Uh, if you watch the original trailer for Deadly Premonition before it was called Deadly Premonition, you would think you're watching a fan-made video game for Twin Peaks. Everything's mm. there. The Red Room, the the Agent Cooper is there basically with somebody else's name. Alora Palmer is there. So. The Percolator. Um, so yeah, cool that we learned more about that. I don't need to do this because that happened today. Uh, I made it a top story that Lego was hosting a Mario Day stream, which happened earlier today. Mario Day is tomorrow. And we all know why tomorrow's Mario, Mario. Day. It's the 15th. Or the 10th. The 10th, oh, right? Sorry. The 10th, <laughs> the 10th yes. I was thinking Pen Mar- 15. Day. <laughs> March, March 5th. March, now you got me doing it. March 10th. M-A-R period. One zero for the date and ten. Yeah, so Mario <laughs> and March fifteenth. That's Maris Day. That's uh, Fraser's brother's wife. There you go. M- m- day. I thought it was uh, Maria Day, day. <laughs> for uh, Maria Shriver, but I guess they could both celebrate it. Uh, Mar- wait, wait, a f- what? I don't know. I was thought a five is more of an S than a. It, it's true. It's true, but but um, I don't know how to spell Maris. <laughs> Maybe that's, I mean, it's close. It, listen, any reason to talk about Maris is good enough for me. Um, but Mario Day is happening tomorrow. And Lego hosted a special event today to talk about some special things they wanted to announce in advance of Mario Day. So very quickly, I'll tell you what happened because I covered it. It was the announcement of three new Lego Mario play sets. What were they? I'm not talking slowly to vamp as I get to the story. I'm just building suspense because the three sets that they announced were none other than. (laughs) Hey, I'm trying to do something here, Luke. Um, Bowser. Oh, boy. Here we go. Battle with Roy at Peach's Castle set. 
King Boo's Haunted Mansion set. And of course, the most important to me anyway, Bowser Express Train set. So they has three new Lego sets. Oh my God, he looks horrible. Yeah, that's wow. the, I just saw that. For like 63 last week. looks pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's bad. I wish I could name any U2 song to make a joke off of, but I am not a fan of U2. <laughs> he still so. hasn't found what he's looking for. The, the road map on his face, streets have known it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they announced those three sets, and they also revealed that coming in 2025, Lego Super Mario Kart, as in a real Lego Mario Kart is coming, not a video game, but Lego Mario Kart. So get ready for a whole bunch more Lego Mario content. He looks now. bad. No, sorry. That's never mind. What's oh. the name of the song? Bad. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> okay. That's perfect then. Um, moving on. Last week, we talked about Nintendo going after the people who made the Yuzu emulator. And the Yuzu emulator let you play Switch games. The oh. team that made Yuzu wanted people to use it to play their archived version of games they actually bought. But as we all know, that's not how emulators work because a lot of people use it for piracy. I had somebody leave me a very angry comment on the site, and that's totally fine. But they were saying that I'm wrong. And they, and to be fair, they said, you're wrong. I don't have the numbers to back it up. And they were like, oh, I was like, oh, all right, that's fair. I don't have numbers either. This that's is in fine. the comment section? It was story? in the comment, yeah. They said the main reason for emulators or the main user of emulators aren't those who pirate games. It's those who have uh, disabilities and emulators allow them to use special controllers to play games. Now, that is certainly true. And that's a very important reason why emulators should be okay. As long as people are legally buying games, I don't see any reason why they shouldn't be able to use an emulator to play it, especially if they have special needs Wait and they a minute. can't play with a Wait. traditional controller. Hold on. If, if the game isn't built in a way that a person with special needs can access it, then I am perfectly fine with them not paying for the game and using an emulator because the game has not been made for them to experience it. And so I would be, they shouldn't have to like. But they would be buying the well, game yeah, and not yeah, buying the hardware. Yeah, yeah I, I guess. Or they could have the hardware too. I just think like if, if there's a barrier to your being able to access someone's game, that you shouldn't be, you shouldn't have to like spend extra money or take no extra steps to make extra it right. Money. Right. So, but I just need to make sure that. Yeah. But you've got to think much broader than that because everybody's got a barrier in some way. So that doesn't mean everybody's got carte blanche. Like I'll yeah. just not buy it. What I'm saying is if you have some sort of uh, disability that prevents you from comfortably or at all using whatever any hardware manufacturer creates for their systems, be it through controllers or whatever, then I see no issue with you, I would say, buying the game and playing it on an emulator. Now, Nintendo wouldn't be happy with that because they don't want you using an emulator to begin with, and they would want you to buy their hardware. I'm sure if you wanted to go the extra legal route, you could buy a Switch and the game that you want and then just still play it on the emulator. That's completely fine, and you're, you're legit all the way. If you're just buying the Switch game and playing it on an emulator, then you're cutting Nintendo out of the hardware sales. But, that, you know, these are moral quandaries that aren't for me to decide. I'm just saying... It's like stealing a loaf of bread to feel, feed your family. Yeah, now see, that's the thing. That Do that, that's fine. But we're talking about... Just like, like that. St yeah, stealing, <laughs> stealing Princess Peach Showtime <laughs> because you want to go on a virtual adventure. Now, I would yeah. be wrong if they put some sort of topping on it butter or jelly perhaps no that's right yeah <laughs> not allowed um so anyway uh that person left that comment and i uh first off they i have to approve all the comments because it was a new account i saw that and lots of people are like lots of people say you didn't approve my comment because you don't agree with it no i it takes time to approve comments i go through it once a day to see what i gotta like new accounts to approve so i approve that comment and even if somebody's mean and nasty to me that's completely fine Unfortunately for them, they were, I would say, a little aggressive, but their point is a valid one. Yes, people who have special needs that are using emulators to play games, totally fine by me. You're not getting any argument here. Now, they said that's what the bigger audience is rather than those that pirate. Just like they don't have numbers, 
I don't have numbers, but I really don't believe there's more. Can we find those numbers? They don't exist. Numbers, you... numbers, numbers. Yeah, who's gonna? Who's gonna be like? Yes, I stole uh, the game. I pirate and... yeah. these games. Exactly. Put me down on the pirate. All we know for a fact is that over a million people before Tears of the Kingdom launched pirated the game. You're telling me that's a million people that are disabled? No, probably some, but they still pirated before the game came out. So that is also still illegal. But I do understand that there is an audience that uses emulators because of their disabilities. Totally fine with me. Is that a bigger audience than those who pirate games because they don't feel like paying for them? I do not have stats to back up either side. I'm telling you, my gut tells me piracy is much bigger than the other side. I'm totally willing to be wrong. If anybody can find facts on that, I will totally correct myself. Just I don't think there's any way piracy could get beaten. So uh, I but I don't know if I'm wrong. I, I'd be happy to be wrong because then I could argue the other side, too. But anyway, Nintendo went after Yuzu, as we talked about last week, and uh, Yuzu wrong. hired a lawyer. And now we know what's going to happen. Yuzu, without saying it, obviously knows they were going to be screwed here. So user was like, uh, we want to settle. And Nintendo was like, okay, let's settle. And a judge approved it. So it's over. Yuzu is done. The emulator is going to be yanked from everywhere that it is. Development on the emulator is over. It's finished by this team anyway. I'm sure somebody else could pick it up if they want. But then they'll be... Uh, They'll be getting in front of a Nintendo's ever watchful eye and potentially getting themselves into a lawsuit. Uh, Yuzu had to turn over their website domain to Nintendo. And worst of all, Yuzu has to pay Nintendo $2.4 million in their legal settlement. settlement. So uh, Nintendo is claiming that Yuzu built the emulator building something or uh, using something that's proprietary to Nintendo and the Switch. Yuzu didn't say they did that, but Yuzu settled here. So either they knew it was going to be a long courtroom battle that was going to be very costly and they don't have the money to do that. Or their lawyer was like, this is going to take a lot of money and you guys are in the wrong too. So let's try and get a settlement. Whatever the case is, all we know is for sure is the emulator's done. That's it. And in the wake of this, we've already seen one other developer who released uh, Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance emulators yank them from a store and make a public statement saying, I'm done. It's over. We're not doing this anymore. And they were like, they said they were doing it because they wanted to focus on their family. And most people are like, you know, it's awfully odd that you want to focus on your family the same week that Nintendo sues another emulator company for $2.4 million. But hmm. they say cause of their family. So either way, the emulator's gone and Nintendo's happy. So this sent a very strong message to everybody. Um, Using the family as a shield. We'll see. Yeah, right. Don't blame me. It's my family. They, they're they the ones that like to eat all the time. I'm totally fine with that. You work hard to put food on your family. So uh, we'll see what happens. But yes, a, a certainly a major victory for Nintendo. And it didn't even have to go through the court proceedings. It's just a settlement and that's that. So other people working on emulators are either A, going to keep it very quiet, or B, call off what they're doing. Uh, and you can bet other game companies are looking at this and they're considering moves as well. Uh, Martin Stuff says, and that's the end of that chapter. Yuzu, more like you sue and settle out of court. Whoa! Oh! Sweet, man, yeah. we've never needed to... Yeah. Uh, rap horn more. That was good. That was good. So yeah, bum, bum, bum. that's the end of that battle. Um, I mean, we could do like the train horn. Yet yeah. when yeah, yeah, I, it doesn't have the same impact, you know. Uh, there was a rumor we talked about last week. I think we talked about it. P R O, as I've said many times, the go-to source. For well, leaks and rumors. One of oh, them. I'm sorry, I'm one sorry. of them. I mean. Well, if you get one that's true one day, well, it, that'll be the <laughs> Maybe. case. But um, the, yes, this person, whoever they are, certainly have ties to Nintendo, uh, as in they know someone there who knows what's going on. And they recently said that there was going to be a Princess Peach Showtime demo. And you know what? That's true. It happened. It was released on March 6th. So just a couple days ago, Nintendo out of nowhere was like on social media. They were like, hey, Princess Peach Showtime demo is out now. And they put out a four minute trailer and they're like, go try it out. So if you've been wondering about the Princess Peach Showtime gameplay experience, Wonder you can download no a demo. 
Let me download a demo right now and try it out. I could turn yeah. Princess Peach on Showtime, and I was like, ooh. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, I haven't played the full game yet because it's not out. I don't know if that's part of the experience. but uh, Anthropy says action game, mini game collection, not. Silly that this is what they gave her for her new rare own game. While I think Anthropy, well, let me, let me step back. Mm. Step back, baby. Step back. Um, it is Women's History Month. It is not. I was going to be nice to the ladies. RMC. I was going to be unprofessional, but I'm not That's going. That's very to unlike you. I was. Well, you know. Leave it's, that it's, to me. It's a heated topic, but I'm stopping. <laughs> and I will say, uh, now that we have played the demo, we. I would say, uh, it is not a mini game collection. Uh, I'll just say that. We'll talk about it more later, um, because I played it, and I did. You end up playing it too. I played it. Then we will be talking more later. Uh, North America. What do we got this week? Let me tell you. Tell us, Romy. Tell uh, us. I would play my music, but I don't know where it is. And Mom Brain's not here. Here's what came out in North America on the Switch this week. Ancient Weapon Holly. Oh. Arcade Archives War of Arrow. Astro mm -hmm. Duel 2. Bad Cat Sam Simulator. Become the Wild. Bubble Fresh Fruits. Buggy Off-Road Racing. Car Racing Ice. Classic. <laughs> Cat Survivors. Oh. Chimp Quest Spirit Isle. All right. Chip and Charge. Contra Operation Galuga, which comes out oh, Tuesday. Game? Brand new Contra oh. game. Cyber Trash Statics. Sure. Dark Days. Date Journal. Death of a Wish. Death of a Wish? Uh, <laughs> Dentist <Come on>. Bling. <laughs> Eld Gear. Empty Shell. Fantasy Tower Defense Ultimate. Flame Keeper and Space Cows. In a War bundle. Amongst the Stars. Focus Tower. Frozen Honey ASMR Complete Edition. Full Speed Animals. That's a great name. <laughs> Gunsmith Workshop Simulator. Never mind, not going to say it. Hex Gambit Respawn. Hexa Puzzle Block. Jigsaw Kids 1. Jigsaw Masterpieces 2. Jigsaw Zoo. Jigsaw Zoo. I like it. Uh, Kushido. Little Racers and Red Wings American Aces together in one package. Llama Soft, the Jeff Minter story. That's the new... Um, what was the first compilation? That's terrible. Somebody in the chat will know it. But uh, Really cool idea. Check that out. Lumber Hill and It Came From Space and Ate Our Brains. Two games in one. Neon On. New Star GP. One More Dungeon 2. Paradiso Series Bundle. Passing By, A Tailwind Journey. Snuffkin, Melody of Moomin Valley. Spot the Difference, Fantasy Edition. Stolen Realm. Taser Gun. The Nom, Complete Edition, that's N-O-M. Toon Roads, Race and Drift. Top Racer Collection. Unicorn Overlord. Violet Wisteria. Warhammer 40,000, Daka Squadron, and finally, Zatram Command. Sticer says, Baby Galuga is my favorite rappy song. <laughs> That's really good. Uh, Lou, would you like to do the honors of Nikki Hill's sweet releases since he's not here? I would love to. All right. Thanks well, for asking. Here you go. All, All right. <clears throat> All right. Uh, March 7th, 2024. 10 seconds to win. Year of our Lord. Astroglide Duel 2. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, oh. Is that what I sound like? Is that what it says? <laughs> I don't know, is it? No. It <laughs> Astroglide Duel 2. It's called Astroglide? No, it's not called Astroglide. What's it called? Astro Duel 2. Oh, okay. Become the Wild. Berserk Boy. Is that anime Berserk Boy? Uh, No, it's a brand new thing. It's like uh, Mega Man S. Uh, bottle tap. I think there's something new berserk now. Like I think it's coming out or it just I came think out. You're right. Berserker. That's why I was on my mind. Uh, buggy race, racing master. <laughs> Car versus cops. Who will win? Cat and ghostly road. <laughs> Chimp quest, spirit isle. Chimp and charge. Crazy goose simulator. Cricket. Through the ages. <laughs> That's Devolver Digital. It looks uh, really funny. Is it the game Cricket? 
Yeah, the sport it's not cricket, like it is you're this, a cricket no, no, it's anymore. Sport no cricket, cricket throughout okay. the ages. Yeah, look at the trailer. It looks really funny. Cube sack ultimate. I understand. <laughs> Demon hands to the moon. DYI fashion star. <laughs> Drone racer. Fly, oh man, I was gonna say something really bad at that. Fly stunt simulator. Eh. Emergency call, the attack squad. Expeditions, a mud runner game. <laughs> Fantasy Tower Defense Ultimate. Followed by Focus Tower. Fortress Defense. Gravity Scape DMX. Guardians of Time. The Chronicles of Kronos. Helicopter Simulator. Rescue oh. Sim. Hellstruck. <laughs> hey. Hell's truck. I was gonna say, stuck with your friends. No, rage with your friends. Hex a puzzle block. Hex gambit respawned. Highway getaway zigzag blocky car. <laughs> wow, it really <laughs> says that. <laughs> Jigsaw kids one. Jigsaw zoo. Kong hero. Matches puzzle two. New star DP. Plumbers don't wear ties. <laughs> now I know that is wrong. not the name of that. So many yeah. things that he's getting wrong. <laughs> no, no, there were misprints on the site here. Misprints. <laughs> misprints on the digital thing. Pony World. Colored by numbers in Animal Golf Battle Racial Bundle. Final <laughs> Racial. Pool Together 2. Rage Quit Bundle. Snuffkin Melody Melody of Moo Moo Valley. Militant Moo Moo Valley. <laughs> this is great. This is more entertaining than when Nikki <laughs> Hill does. <laughs> Taser Mega Gun. Doo -doo. Temple Escape. TV Studio Story. Uh, Oof Uria 2. The Saga. It's a saga just trying to name it. That is great. Do you not know how to say that? Oof. Euphoria? I mean, come on. Euphoria? Euphoria! Hey! There we go. There we go. Hey! Is it Euphoria normally with an E? We got there. Yes, it is. Save misprint on the sign again. Unicorn Overlord. Valiant Hearts Coming Home. Valiant Hearts The Collection. Hmm. Virus Rush. Warrior Escape and... Zatrom Command. Is there a comment there, Lou? Uh, <laughs> he couldn't even read English. I he's going to read this comment. A comment. QSC Quise Passe, Nikki. All right. Uba Duba Solo. So this Valiant Hearts coming home. It was home from Steister, by the way. And Valiant Hearts, the collection. What is it? Is there Was there a DLC that I missed or something with Valiant that? Hearts is like new. And Valiant Hearts, the collection is uh, multiple Valiant Hearts games, I guess. I don't know. So, okay. You don't know. I'll look it up. Valiant Hearts coming home is, it was on mobile, like iPhone, and they just ported yeah. it to consoles. But that's a different game than just the... Yes. And it's a full game? To, uh, as far as I understand, yes, it is. Um, and then a collection I would imagine would be probably would have the one we them. played or the one you played and the new one. Yeah. Uh, I is think... this new one like new, new or? It was only available on mobile. It oh, okay. Literally That's just why it probably... came out now on consoles. All right. Thank um, you. Sorry to interrupt you. You got it. Uh, did you leave out points? Solid Master Link says, did you sorry discord taking a while did you leave out the points in euphoria oh i did you're right mm. you're right i did because mm -hmm. it doesn't play well with social media um when our thing tries to spit out the link it gets funky so i left out the dots in between um so you you got a backer here lube they're they're standing <laughs> up for you thank you solid master it's link. supposed to be like you dot i can four read that dot, i can read that i a yeah. dot U yeah for <laughs> yeah right that. it's mm -hmm. still Perfectly. weirdly but <laughs> Uh, that's it. Um, no, they're not called typos. Ten division. They're called misprints, <laughs> according to Loop. That's it. That's all we got for top stories. I told you there wasn't a lot. Mom, brain. What'd you play this week? Penny and Flow. That's it. Let it out. Let it out. Uh, Lou, what have you been playing? Uh, I've been playing some Civ Six. 
Okay. And I don't think did we? No, I don't. I didn't play any Fortnite this week, but I've been playing Hell Divers too <laughs> with my bros. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Go ahead with Rami and Do and another person who's ever been on the yeah, show. I don't remember what you're talking. <laughs> Me neither. Um, and it's a lot of fun. We, uh, yeah, we talked about it the last we couple of weeks. Glorious played, victories. So you, you could uh, elaborate if you want. To. Oh, well, I'm sure everyone already knows about it, but we have a great time and it's really hard. And <laughs> I think we need to uh, get well, better, get good. I mean, the last two times we played, we were fine. On we completed our road. missions. <laughs> well, we bumped it up last time from. We went from trivial to trivial easy. To easy. Yeah, we, we, uh, easy was fine. I yeah. think we're taking it at a pretty good pace. Yeah. yeah. We're doing the missions that are opening up with each difficulty. And once we've done all of them, then we go to the next one. I, I think we're good. Um, We weren't good when we first started, but yeah. I think we're good now. We're not good against the automatons, but we're good at killing bugs. I think. I don't know. I want to say it was the difficulty, man. It yeah. had to be the difficulty level. We didn't think about it. Once we tweaked difficulty, we didn't have any problems with either. Like we didn't fail mission. We haven't failed a mission since. It was yeah, just true. We had like one accidental grenade death and like uh, some of uh, the, the, the this week, the plane arm lighting me on fire and <laughs> crushing me. And But other than that, we were good. When we tried to load into your ship, uh, we yes. got caught in the uh, hangar bay somehow. Or Multiple whatever. times you got caught and then our other friend got caught. Yeah, I don't know what the hell happened there. But uh, yeah, but yeah, no server issues for us. So that's been good. Yeah, they seem like they've gotten things figured yeah. out now. And now there's going to be uh, there's mechs in the game because uh, if you're following the story, uh, the I Helldivers have liberated the planet that had the mech factory on it. Now you can call down mechs. Uh, I saw there was some kind of controversy controversy about the mechs, but I didn't look into it more. So I don't know. People were having trouble finding them or they weren't where they were supposed to be. Or I don't know. I, don't know. I didn't uh, read anything, but all the TikToks I've seen have been people getting in mechs thinking that they're going to be indestructible and then like immediately <laughs> exploding. <laughs> and uh, so I think, I think if there are complaints, Sounds it might like be... That the mechs are too weak. Sounds like our day one uh, in Hell Divers. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just us going right in, and getting destroyed. Well, like you're gonna use a mech anyway, RMC. Come on. I would love to be in a mech. That would be fun. Oh, now like that, that you would do. Okay. Yeah, because that's a whole new way of momentum and moving. And yeah, that's right, a, well, maybe yeah, that's, well, that's your thing. thing. Maybe I could jump off of something without getting hurt when I'm in a mech. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta get to level eight so you can get that jetpack. That's what you got. I do, do want the jetpack. Yeah, like, uh, what level are we at now? Five, six. Uh, I've played a little bit extra, so I, think I am twenty seven now. <laughs> um, <laughs> seven well, you already had a special cadet rank or whatever it was because you went all in. Well, so. I mean, that didn't raise my level. That just gave me some extra it beginning stuff. It, it does when people see your name, they're like, "He's a little bit I'm better than everybody." Else. <laughs> yeah. He's kind of a super, oh, super citizen. citizen. That's yeah. right. Um, so you played that in Civ, and that's it. Yeah, that is correct. All right, do what have you been playing? Uku. Uh, played some animal crossing new horizons uh i didn't you know i was just kind of going through the motions with that game and then uh i read somewhere that you can get gold roses and i was like how do you get golden roses i thought i've done everything so i looked into that and had to talk to isabel and she rated my island you have to get a five star rating i only had a four star rating because oh. there were too many trees People were getting lost, apparently, in the wilderness. So I had to go around and like chop down a whole bunch of trees. And then I went back to Isabel. Isabel, five stars. Gave me the gold, <laughs> the gold watering can, which allows me to water, you know, as in real life, you water white roses or black roses with uh, the gold watering can. And then yeah. the next day you wake up and there's some gold roses there. So I was ready for you to be like, I cut down all these trees and then I got four stars for not enough shade. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, not enough trees. I was too worried about going too hard on the tree cutting because I, I really do like my trees. So I kind of took it in stages so as not to do too much. Cut but... a tree, go talk to Isabel. Cut a tree, go talk to Isabel. <laughs> it, it wasn't quite that bad, but, uh, you know, we figured it out yes. and... We're moving forward, hopefully, with some new gold roses. Congratulations on your five-star count. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, we've been playing some Fortnite uh, as far as there's a new season started last night. We couldn't really get into it. I was lucky enough to um, get into the lobby and be able to play a couple of solo matches, but uh, 
nobody else could get in until much later. RMC, I'm guessing you got in later in the evening. Yeah. Uh, and then our other buddy just went to bed while he was waiting because we because you know we, it took like an hour and a half to even get into the game. But I played a couple. Of, I played a couple of solo matches on the new season and thought it was very fun. There's a lot of cool um, Greek god uh, locations and uh, items. What is that statue? You're a history guy. You are too. The giant Greek statue, the guy with the sword. That's a real thing. The Greek statue, the guy with the sword. Yeah, he's got the helmet and the sword. It's in Fortnite now, but it's like humongous, and that's a real thing. Achilles? I don't I'd know. Colossus of Rhodes? The Colossus oh, yeah. of Rhodes is yeah. just a big bronze statue with a torch. It was used as a harbor entrance. You have to look it up. I think that could be what you're talking um, about. But that statue sword. in the back is massive. Like that is that is huge. Are you thinking of Achilles? No, I'm not. I got. I said I got to look it up. Like in the game, the statue is huge. Have you gone up on it? I only played. I only got to play two games, and I didn't do that. I got to go to Hades, and I got to go to um, Mount Olympus, and both were really cool. Yeah, there's like. Uh, uh, there's a lot of like new stuff just in these two locations between the powers you can get and the new yeah. bosses. And uh, I don't want to steal your thunder. You go ahead. When I first landed on my first game, it was in Hades and I landed right in like a purple pool of goo. And I was like, Oh no, I hope this isn't poison. And it turns out, no, it's like a sweet, like zip, zip jump. Yeah. So, um, it must have been the first time the guy who landed there with me was playing as well because he picked up the weapon and was going to murder me and I zipped right out of there and he didn't zip after me. I don't think he knew how about zipping yet. Well, I don't think I, it's called that. When I played with my mom, she was like, if you go in this weird water, it makes skulls fly around you. And I don't know what they do. And I was like, what? So I went in the water and I was like, what are these things? Does this mean like extra hits or so? Or what is this? I tried everything I could think of and I was like, maybe it's a double jump and I hit the button twice and dashed across the map and I was like, oh, so yeah, it's really helpful. I wish you could have more of them, but in a pinch, it's great to get away from yeah, somebody. It's good. And if you swim, you know, you can make it last. Yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah, so that was like my first uh, kind of experience and, and I ended up getting some Icarus wings and I, I told oh, you, yeah. RMC, a little bit last night, so uh, I got down to uh, just two people left, me and this other person. And that other person had uh, the Zeus lightning bolts and I had the Icarus wings. And it was clear that neither one of us knew yet how to use the powers properly. So it was just like the two of us in this open field, like jumping up and down, back and forth, switching weapons, trying to get each other with these like Greek God weapons and totally missing and failing. And it was very funny. And uh, I had I, a moment like that. Last I ended night. up failing worse because I got second place. But mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. It's just a bummer that we didn't get to play. I tried to boot up today as well, and there was a queue. Um, How long was the queue? Eight minutes. But oh, I not, I didn't end bad. up sticking around just because I, I was more curious than anything just to see what was going on. So you went in and you were in a queue. I went in later because I let it. I waited all day for the update. Um, so when I went into the queue, it said 18 minutes, but then it went up to 28 minutes. So I probably waited about 35 ish minutes. I was on my phone looking at stuff. So I went into play. My cousin went into play later and his queue was over an hour. And he's like, I'm going to go watch something on TV, but I'll come back and play. And he jumped in with us later. But then later, later at night, I went and did like a couple hours of work and I came back and last night at like four in the morning the queue was it's at a queue of like 10 seconds so i was in oh, right wow. away so as today goes on it should be there's going to be times where there is a you know 10 minute queue probably but it'll get back to normal over so, the weekend Fortnite's more popular than ever then right i mean well, it has to be it, it's the new season it's the new season it always it's like this more i just don't remember it's this? not always like this the problem is there are more people than ever playing that is true but not necessarily all at once the problem is the season was supposed to go live at like five in the morning and they had a major technical issue. So literally everybody that was planning to play at different times during the day was just waiting all day to play. So when the service did open, instead of having the normal amount of people, it's everybody coming oh, in. Okay. So they got crushed and those poor 
developers like it's friday they're launching a new season right. it doesn't go right and then they are because epic said like epic was very clear about it they were like it's not something came up and we need to fix something we're gonna be down like eight hours and then like four hours into the eight hours they're like we're gonna need more time so they it's supposed to go live that morning probably like i said five or six in the morning and it didn't what do you think like 10 like 9 30 10 it started to come back to life for the first yeah. time like yeah. literally the first time maybe. so yeah <clears throat> everybody was trying to jump on then to see it so but when i played every time i played everything was normal like i i know you were having trouble joining parties and all that uh, i'm sure that's ironed out now but when I played, I played a game with my mom and I played a game with my mom and my cousin and we joined parties fine. So everything worked. The game functioned fine. Like, uh, you know, they just whatever thing they needed to take care of, it took a lot of time. And you can bet those developers are working overtime this weekend to get everything running as smoothly as possible because they, you know, you don't want to launch your new season with the most amount of players you've ever had and have it not launch when it's supposed to. So not a great situation for them. But, you know, I don't feel bad for Epic, but I do feel bad for the people doing the grunt work and making everything sure. happen. So, uh, But yes, uh, I'll talk more Does about the it. the statue but... you're thinking about have a trident? Is it Poseidon? No. So what it is, is it's a, like an amalgamation of a whole bunch of statues. Now that I'm looking at what you're looking at and the picture you saw, and I looked up stuff on my own, it's basically Fortnite's version of the Colossus of Rhodes. Oh. So... Uh, but it's just, it's not the legs. It's just a torso. Is up. there a wiener? But no wiener. Uh, well, That's I guess the wiener, the wiener would be Ooh, in the building. But it's, Some colossus. It's the, <laughs> it's the thing. It's I've never seen something in Fortnite before that gives me that great of a sense of scale. Like when you <laughs> look at wiener. it, you're like, yes. oh my God. Great sense of and I, owner. I used wings to fly up to the top and perch on the top of the helmet. And I was sniping people on like, the drop off for the bullet was insane because everybody below you is so far below, but uh, it's just really a really cool sight to see. I'll talk more about it later, but uh, go on, dude. Yes. So looking forward to playing more Fortnite new season. Uh, played some Hell Divers. We talked about that. That's a lot of fun. Uh, I played the demos for both Contra and Princess Peach Showtime. Um, I agree with what you've been saying about Contra, where, I mean, it, the, the, the demo felt a little off. Um, it, it definitely looks and plays just like Contra, but there was just something with the controls uh, where I didn't feel like I was perfectly in, in control, if you will. There was just something uh, like a little lagging, or I can't explain it, but I felt it immediately, and it was, it, you know, it was annoying. But uh, if they iron that you out... You are not the only one. If they iron that out for the for the full game, it'll be a fun Contra experience. At least it seems like it. Um, as far as Princess Peach Showtime goes, uh, with peace and love, that's not my. It's not going to be a game for me. But um, I thought it had a lot of charm. Um, <laughs> it's. Uh, I, I like the idea of the game. I I thought it could have used even more Nintendo charm. Maybe I was expecting it to be just because of like the premise of the game and everything and how Nintendo handles all their first party titles. I, I just, I thought it would be even more kind of um, charming with those little Nintendo bits and felt, felt a few little things here and there um, kind of lacking. And then as far as the gameplay goes, it, you know, it's, it, it's not, it's not made for me, but it's like a, it's just a really easy experience and uh there's not much to it and wasn't it wasn't all that engaging for me um but i liked you know the colors and i liked like i said i like the idea of it and the variety that i think it can bring is is kind of fun but um not you know i'm, I'm not going to be able to i'm not going to get the full game myself but i'm glad that i got to try it out i That's think it's cool that there's there. yeah i think it's really cool that the demo's there because i was very very curious about the game um yeah, I don't know. I was thinking it would it would be it would be a little bit I don't know. And there was something about the animation in it that or maybe the frame rate, I don't know. There was something that just seemed a little sluggish, like not as polished as most of their games. Now maybe I'm uh wrong. I don't have the best eye for things like that, but but for me it didn't seem like a like a totally polished experience as far as like what Nintendo usually puts forward um 
But I think like a lot of people, I think people who don't play a lot of games, um, who aren't used to gaming that much, they might have a really good time with this game because it seems, because uh, it's like, because it's simple, but it's colorful and, you know, it's versatile. Uh, so I th- it, it would be a great entry level, like, like you said, not someone who usually games probably could. It's a great game to start out with. Yeah. I think so. Um, so, so yeah, peace and love. Uh, and then last uh, but not least, I've been playing uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth on the PlayStation 5. Hey, this is a huge, this is a huge time to be a PlayStation 5 owner, huh? A couple wow. of exclusives, Helldivers and, and this. I don't even know what to do with myself, all these now exclusives. remember, you probably won't be able to get that third Final Fantasy VII on PS5, <laughs> but fingers crossed, yeah, you got right. one of them exactly um so so yeah there's um i was really down on this game last week uh because the the battle system is very involved and it was very confusing and it took me quite a while to get used to it um i'm a lot better at the battling now i'm starting to enjoy it a lot more because of that it's still not my type of RPG, the action RPG kind of isn't my style and uh, the way it's implemented here while really well done, it's just not it's just not what I usually prefer in my either open world games or my RPGs. Um, but but I've you know I've stuck it out and I've gotten used to the battle system. I'm pretty good at it now. Uh, there's a lot of extraneous numbers and stats and stuff that I don't even look at that I don't know if you, I, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff there that makes it kind of convoluted. Um, but if you don't take it too seriously, I don't know. I've been doing all right with it uh, now that I've kind of gotten used to it. Numbers, numbers, numbers. Yes, tons of numbers. I it's like, it. and I don't understand, like, I'm not upset that, Everybody levels up. You you fight with three people in your party at once, but you've got five people uh, all together, and you all travel together, and you just are picking which three you want to kind of be your primary three. But even the two that aren't fighting with you will level up with you. Now, I don't mind that. I think it's very convenient, but it's kind of it's it, it to me. It's like, what's the point? Like, what's the point? We of... were watching the whole thing, so we learned what you did. <laughs> exactly, we they got all too. the experience. Yeah. I mean, I'm not upset about it, but it's just the thing that I've noticed. So I don't know. Uh, I love. There's a few things that I do absolutely love about this game. So I love Queen's Blood. There's a great card game that's in uh, the 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 whole game is like side missions and like like side like mini games which i'm not too keen on again not my final fantasy 7 but um but there are like some that are fun so queen's blood the card game i absolutely love somebody um, already made a deck in real life i believe it it's a it's a lot of fun i think it's i think it's really cool and it's great to go around and challenge players i wish it were more like the witcher where almost everybody played and you could just challenge people all day long here, there's like very specific people that you can challenge, and uh, the replayability on the challenges is um, lacking a little bit right now. But is I, the game fun? The card game or the actual game? Sorry, I'm getting to it. I know there's a lot. I have a whole like novel here, Reggie. I'm I, sorry. I, I'm I like, was just <laughs> asking about the card game. Oh yeah, I like the card game a lot. The uh, game is fun. Thank you, Reg. Um. I love there's a piano playing sheet music game. That's awesome. I've, that I've, I've seen a lot of that online that I think you would love. Uh, I absolutely love hunting down the pianos and doing that. Um, and then there's a you know, it's just all your classic Final Fantasy seven stuff. The card games, the piano games. Well, what's great about the piano game? Like, yeah, I mean, I, oh, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. But here's here. Like there are mini games in the original Final Fantasy seven, you know, and like some are hit and some Lucky are miss. Saucer. Yeah. Uh, the golden saucer, golden but, saucer. Yeah, but it's Damn. okay. Uh, yeah, uh, but I don't know. Like there, there's some that are good here. You know, like there's a Fort Condor mini game that I absolutely love. It's like a, t- it's like a tower defense game that was in the original Final Fantasy VII. Um, but what's cool about it is they do the the classic graphics. So 
your characters look like they did in Final Fantasy VII, and it's like as close as you're gonna get to like the remake that yeah, I wanted. It's awesome and like what's killing me rmc is anytime i see like on reddit or something like someone talking about it they hate it that's like their least favorite part of the game i know that's what the internet shows me that's oh, what i get yeah. right away they're like look at this and look at how I, much i hate this but look at this so oh. so i things like that i absolutely love and uh they're very very fun i've been having fun doing that um the open world stuff it, i've become addicted to it the way I do with open world games, but it's not, but it's, it doesn't, it, it's not the game. It's not the final fantasy seven that I, that I kind of am used to, you know, like I'm being pulled through this game by, by uh, like fan service pretty much, you know, like if this were, if this were final fantasy 17 or something, I wouldn't have bought it. You know, I wouldn't be interested in, yeah. in getting into it. Because these are familiar characters, it's all familiar music, all the locations are familiar, you know, it's pulling me through and I'm going around, you know, uh, the music and like the, like I said, the atmosphere is pulling me through, but it's kind of like falling short of a Final Fantasy VII experience. It's kind of just like an RPG, action RPG, open world experience. Um other than that stuff, the biggest disappointments are probably the story itself. The changes to the storyline are, in my opinion, awful. Um, the you know there it changes a lot of the character dynamics in between, like in between the your party members, and they just don't feel like the same characters that they were uh, in Final Fantasy VII. And the the dialogue while abysmal the 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 voice acting's not even bad it's the dialogue that's bad and it and the things that the characters say to each other it's like i don't even think these are the same characters like they're not they're not the characters that we know yeah. so it feels like a totally different experience and they change a whole bunch they add new characters there's you know how many characters are in final fantasy 7 there's not like enough. hundreds like they could have fleshed out any little character, but they added like characters. And this is, you know, there's like a Poochie, the rock and dog. Yeah. And it's kind of like, why are all these new characters in here? Just flesh out some of the old ones or do like, so there's a lot of stuff that doesn't need to be there. And I'm 24, I'm 23 hours into this game, 23 hours in, and I've done almost nothing. I'm on chapter four. I mean, I've done nothing. If I were playing the original game, I'd be like halfway through the game, if not even more than that by now. I I feel like I've gotten none of this story. It's all open world, going around on a chocobo and just like doing little tasks and picking flowers and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> Collecting that's, bugs. That's what's exactly. big with games today. They're open world and they're they're busy work. And so it's it. a, it's a lot of that kind of stuff. And I'm I've got that. Uh, I'm not classified ocd but i've got that in my brain where i'm walking around the open world I and i see collect everything. exactly you see the little things and it's like oh there's sage over there see the icon and it's like i'm, I'm picking up 99 sage like i can't even carry anymore and my brain just can't turn off Ooh, that icon go and pick it up you know like <laughs> over encumbered <laughs> yeah so so i don't so it's turned while i am enjoying my obviously i played 23 hours so i'm enjoying my time with it i'd say a lot of it is fueled by reminiscence and great music that's also you know got uh tugging at the heartstrings um that's where a lot of my gameplay is being fueled from it's and it's not from the story it's i've i'm long past wanting to know what happens in this game story because once they started giving me a little bit more i was like oh god it's not even that great so you know at this point i'm just playing through to see all my favorite set pieces realized in you know with the new graphics and the and the new stuff so um while i still would recommend this game to somebody who hasn't played like who knows nothing about final fantasy 7 i i could still recommend it i would you know i'd i'd want you to play the original not because i'm like one of those crotchety old men but i just think that there, you know, like you said, RMC. There's a reason we have this remake. There's a reason they wanted to make to get it again. Rid of the original, Beca no, because the first one was so wonderful, well, and that's dead. why they did Forget it. Forget it. Right, you're right. It's the what's that uh, Star Wars thing? 
forget the past, kill it, whatever it is. It's time for Final Fantasy VII to end. Um, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Something like that. But yeah, it's just it's it is what it is. I'm playing it. I'm having my fun. It's not what I would want from a Final Fantasy VII remake. I'm part of the problem because you know I'm supporting it, and it's uh, and you know, like you said, it's gonna kill the original. But but hey, much like the life, much like. <laughs> A gunga galunga. Uh, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, like much like you know the a life returning back to the life stream or the oh. uh, like. Yeah, I don't know. Let the past die. Kill it if you have to. That's the Star Wars. Thing. There you go. There you go. Let's burn our bridges so oh, that we can't it. be attacked from it. behind. Um, yeah. So thanks for listening to all that. I know I drone on and on and on about the games that I played, but uh, I do love talking about them. RMC. Can you please follow it up with what you've been playing? Sure. Uh, I played Fortnite, the newest season. Took me a while to get in there, but I played a good amount last night. I played, as I said, with family. Had a lot of fun. Love the wings. Love the lightning bolts. No traversal with lightning bolts. No, well, there's an attack with the wings, but it's just a dive bomb. So I'm struggling with which do I want more? I don't know. The wings are probably better because you can go really far with them. Now, but can forgive me. Um, I like I said, I only played the two games, so I saw Icarus wings everywhere. But can you get the Zeus bolts anywhere, or does yep. it? Yeah, okay. they're all over. Yeah, in regular chests and whatever. Yeah, they're all around. Um, so uh, I like both of those. They're a lot of fun. I won a game with the lightning bolts, so uh, that felt great. Um, a lot of the new weapons are great. That new shotgun is interesting. Did you try the new shotgun? I did. Yeah, because it's very powerful. But it's three shots and you got to reload. So if you land those three shots, that person's going to be almost dead or dead. But if you don't, you got to reload for another three shots. And it's a quick reload, but it's enough for you to die in. So it's an interesting idea. Uh, the new DMR that's in it is killer. I love that. That yeah, new that, DMR is that thing really great. good. I, it's now a viable alternative uh, if you don't have a sniper rifle. Like I used the DMR to win a game last night, and I was like, "Oh, this one feels really good." What's it? What's it called? Like Queen? Some whatever. I don't remember. But it's very good. Like it's it's not a rapid fire gun, but it does some good damage, and you get great distance on it too. So it's there's definitely good. there was this part of I want to say the uh, Mount Olympus. There's like this long corridor. Uh, and you can't like you can't really like move left or right when you're in it. And uh, I was in it, and I was like, "Oh!" And I just picked up that DMR, and I was like, "Oh, this would be a pretty cool corridor for sniping. Yeah. Like someone could get screwed here." And lo and behold, someone like <laughs> appeared way down, and I was like, Ooh, And I one shot right to the head with the D, and I was like, "This DMR yeah. is my my I, new gun." I found a legendary DMR, and I got somebody one shot in the head too. And I was like, "Oh, this sucker's really powerful." So I was screwing around with the green one that I found in next game. And I was like, I really like this gun. Um, so that's great. As Dew said, the skulls for the air dashes are really cool. Um, I love like the underground bunkers that there are. Um, Cause they're, you know how they're the previous season had, had like mod bench rooms where you could go in and mod weapons and those still exist. But now there's underground bunkers that have mod benches and much more loot to get. Plus, you're hot. You're not out in the open. You're hiding in a little hole in the ground. So I really like that. Um, there's uh, there was some beer. Beer. Very nice. It's very very nice. <laughs> there was something else I was gonna say about the new season. Oh oh uh, the medallions. Have you seen that the medallions change? They still put a yellow circle on the map, but each medallion does something different now. So like if oh, you get okay. Hades medallion, whenever you kill someone, you siphon health off of them. Oh. Or when you get like, a, I don't know, what there's another medallion that makes you run fast and jump really high and you get no fall damage. So medallions have an added benefit for carrying besides just shield and that's it. So I really like that. Um, it felt really good. Uh, you know, it's I'm one day into the season, but I was very impressed with it. I really liked what I played. And I feel that itch that I felt in previous seasons where I was like, I kind of want to play solo just because I'm having that much fun. Like I'll certainly never turn down friends, but uh, I'm like, I want to go play on my own just because I'm enjoying it that much. Like I haven't really felt 
that kind of pulls since like the uh, the Marvel season. I played a lot of solo stuff, and this one I I can feel that same pull. So really liked it. Excited to play soon and more and lots. Um, so I played that. I played. Uh, let me do this. Let me. Do, how am I gonna do this? Um, there is something I played, but. I can't tell you what, and I'll leave it at that. Oh, that was pretty good. <laughs> I'll be able to tell you next week, but uh, if you know, you know. Um, I did play, uh, I wish I could say it like you said it, Lou, because nobody does it better. Uh, I was calling it Euphoria, the correct name, but whatever you call it. I played that and I reviewed it. The review is on the site. I, uh, In my review, I talked about how as a young lad, RMC would rush to the library to look at the latest Nintendo Power issues and there was one that had, I'm pretty sure it was Nintendo Power, had one about Euphoria. And I was like, a new Sunsoft game for the NES. This is so exciting. I can't wait for it to come out. And it never came out here because oh. they only put it out in Europe and Japan. They said, no North America because Sunsoft in North America was like, this is too kiddie. They're not going to want this here. So that we didn't get it. And the version that went to Europe got some odd localiza localization changes. They changed the main character from... Uh, what did they change him? His name was Bop Louie, and he's some like little white weird guy with like a ski cap on. I, I I don't I don't I don't know I don't know why they decided that's the change we need for uh for Europe for this game to sell really well. But um yeah, so the game never got localized. I was pissed for years, and eventually it came out on the uh, the Wii Virtual Console, and I played it there, and I loved it. I was like, man, this is a really cool game, because it was a mini Metroidvania, basically. And back in the era of the NES, that was new, so that was really cool. But this is Euphoria the Saga 2, mm. and um, it's a sequel to the first one, which came out 33 years ago, but we finally got a, a sequel. Finally! Because uh, mm. Sunsoft is coming back to making games, which is awesome. So, the visuals in this game are very close to that of Yoshi's Woolly World. So, Sunsoft actually made these characters in real life. They made felt, plush, wire characters to play with and then photograph them and scan them into computers and use those to animate in the game. And the same goes for backgrounds and things like that. So, it's got a really nice look to it. I, I love the style of it. Um, just like in the first game, you have four different characters. You have to get all four characters. You start as one, but then you unlock the others as you find them on the map. And each character has a different ability. The main character, uh, what does he do that others don't do? I don't know. There's another one that can float in water. There's another one that can actually swim around in water. And then there's another one that I just played the game. And why am I blanking on this? Um, he's the little, he's my favorite. Uh what does he do that others can't do? I don't remember. I'm having a brain fart. Um, and then as in any Metroidvania, you can get new abilities that let you access other areas as well. So uh, the thing that makes this unique is while the overall map is the same and you have to visit areas to get to other areas to get to access things, when you go to those, those areas of the map, they are randomized. So when you go in like to the forest, sometimes there'll be like a whole bunch of enemies and platforms to jump over. But next time you go in, there'll be like only holes to jump over and a different set of enemies or the landscape is completely different. It's still forest and still looks like a forest, but everything you do to get around is completely different. Um, so I really like that because you'll I don't know how many variations there are really, but there's enough to keep it feeling fresh. You're like, oh, I haven't seen this layout before or I wasn't expecting this enemy here. So it's a cool idea because in a metro in a Metroidvania, there's a lot of backtracking. Now, when you backtrack, while well, you go to the same themed areas, the layouts are different. You're only running left to right. So it's not like, how do I get to where I need to go? You just go to the left or the right to get there. But as you go through, you'll have different things to tackle. It's a cool idea. Um, and then there's vending machines. There's a vending machine in the hub area that basically unlocks your progress because the vending machine gets stocked with new things and those new things will let you access new areas of the game and you collect money and cans money. to cash in at the vending machine and once you collect enough cans something new will be in the vending hey, machine cans and that's how you uh get a new ability and so on and so on so basically if you're like 
I don't know where to go. It usually means you got to collect more cans to cash in to get a new upgrade. Um, so yeah, I really like it. The soundtrack is a remake of the original game soundtrack. The original soundtrack was a killer soundtrack. This one is just as good. It's got, you know, it was a Sunsoft game. So back in the day, it had that Sunsoft sound and it's oh, a yeah. special sound chip in their game. And whoever did the soundtrack here to remake this one paid tribute to that in some really nice ways. It's an it's an awesome version of a classic soundtrack. They did a really good job. Um, it's like a little frog guy. It oh yes, the guy, the character I forgot is one of the coolest ones of all. It's like so 90s. Look, look at this guy. It's a ghost with a baseball cap and sunglasses. Like, come on, that is a 90s yeah, mascot good. character right there. So he can float uh, or he can um, like slowly fall while others can't do that. Then there's the penguin. There's somebody that looks like a uh, Tanuki, although Ooh. it's it's a person in a suit. So you have a frog character, a penguin character, a ghost, and a human in a Tanuki suit. So it's so four weirdos, but it's a uh, Metroidvania. Like I said, you go around and explore, and uh, it doesn't take long. It's like two or three hours. It's not difficult by any means, um, but it's it's got some ideas. It's crazy that this game, which is basically in a reintroduction to the first game, but it's new elements as well. It's crazy that 30 years after the original came out, you see things in this one and you're like, a lot of games still don't do this kind of stuff. So it's a really cool game. It's awesome. It's exactly what Sunsoft needed to do to reintroduce this franchise. So it's impressive because, you know, who the hell knows who's working at Sunsoft anymore? They did so much during the NES era and a lot during the Super Nintendo Genesis era. And then they just kind of, fell off for decades and decades but now they're trying to come back and this is proof that they got some people on their team uh that know how to do something so good for them um really like the game really really enjoyed it uh you can read my review if you want so i played that and then the only other thing i played was final fantasy 7 remake i went back to it like i said i would deleted my save started over I'm now considerably further than where I was the first time I played. So instead of stopping at the train, I continued after. The where train. are you? I'm still in the slums, but I did all the side missions and all that stuff. What's the girl's name with the red bandana? Oh, uh, Jesse. She they, they just had the meeting in the bar where they were telling Cloud he can't go. And she's mm -hmm. like, oh, she meets him at his and house. She's and like, gives him oh, the material. this wasn't in the original game. But how yeah. about we pad it out, yeah. pad out an already 60 like, hour game with here's some, some material. The second time I'm giving it to you, here it is. Oh, wait, you can't get it yet. Blah, blah, blah. So that's mm -hmm. where I'm at. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. You're what loving to say. it. I don't know what to say. Loving it. <laughs> I feel about it like I felt last time, but worse. <laughs> now, what if this were. What if it weren't a remake? What if this were like Final Fantasy 17? You think you'd you'd be enjoying it? Uh, like if if you, I would certainly a... feel differently about it. Mechanics wise, I would feel exactly the same. Yeah, so you're not even having fun playing it. So no, I mean like I'm not not having fun, but it's what am I doing? What but am I doing? But you're only playing it because it's the remake. You wouldn't be. Well, you I'm playing it. I'm giving it, it a otherwise. second chance because everybody's like, it's like a completely different game. You got to go play. And it is. But the reason I would imagine most people are buying Final Fantasy 7 is because they or Final Fantasy 7 remake is because they played the original or at least they know the original. And they're like, I want to see what the, what made this game so popular. And I'm someone who played the original. I'm like, what are they? What have they done to my boy? My boy. So I just. I don't know. The what? dialogue is so bad. Isn't it horrible? The dialogue is yeah, so awful. bad. Now, granted, in the first game, the dialogue, or in the original game, the dialogue might have been bad. I don't remember. You probably remember better than I do. The difference is you're reading, you're it. reading it, and you can mold that. Everything, mostly when you read it, makes sense it's to you. There will be some things that you read, reading. and you're like, what's this? But more often than not, when you're just reading text, you contextually shape it so that it sounds good to you. When somebody locks it in, with an animated face and voice work, that's committing a very specific direction. So when you hear it, you're like, well, have these people ever talked to another person in their life before? The dialogue is so bad. It's yeah. horrendous. Like the meeting between uh, Cloud and Aerith when she first gives him the flower. I, I remember it annoying me last time, but this time I was like, this is really... Everything with Barrett on the train is really yeah. bad. Um, 
Yeah, I it's, I find with with Barrett in when I don't I don't remember the remake as much, but in Rebirth during all the fights when you switch to characters, they say something when you switch to them. And he says the same thing every time. And he's just like, need my help, do you? And it's like, yeah. how many times do I have to hear this in one fight? Yeah. Like you just it just you just get used to it and you don't even hear it anymore. But like he's saying he, they say the same things each time. And so far, only for Bar only with Barrett for me, he's my worst enemy in a game because he's like, oh, he's doing that big attack. We should probably go hide behind. And I'm like, Telling shut you up, exactly Barrett. what to do. Shut up. Like. <laughs> I don't want to. I want to figure it out. But the whole, every look time, at that ledge over there. Maybe yeah. we could jump up over there. You think you can hit that guy with your sword? I can shoot him with my gun. And I'm like, please <laughs> stop, Barrett. Do you want me to leave so you can do the mission on your own? <laughs> it drives me nuts. Um, but uh, uh, Tifa hasn't been like that for me. She'll say things in the fight, but she's not like we got to do this or that or the other thing. Um, but the the dialogue's so bad, especially with Aerith, that I find myself not like you know like, like kind of like keeping her out of the party and stuff and it's almost like let's the reasons this. i liked you are gone now yeah, yeah like all that stuff that made her like so special in the original games leading up to you know the one of the biggest moments in gaming story history and i could like i know it's coming and i don't give a crap i uh yeah so like I obviously I'm mostly annoyed with this because of remakes and because, you know, it's not the Final Fantasy seven I like. And as I've said last week, I, I don't like when you go back in and you're like, here's this thing that everybody loves. Now we're going to do it again and add in all this extra stuff and change all this. And it's, I'm like, I don't that doesn't interest me at all. Um, but gameplay wise, it's fine. Like the gameplay, I will say I'm bored to it's fine because like. I'm going to do side missions because I know it's important to level up and I don't want to get in a situation where I got to grind, you know, 30 hours down the road somewhere. So I'm doing everybody's side mission. You got the little dork who's like scan information Chadley. during Ugh. my He's the missions. Worst. Like, yeah, I'm going to fight. But hold on a second. Let me waste uh, an active time battle thing on scanning this stupid monster so you can make me material i don't give a crap about don't you don't you worry the assess comes in even harder in the next oh, game great. and chadley great. comes great. back he like finds you at some farm he's like hey remember me and it's like oh god i, I tried to forget you yeah uh yeah so i talked to him and he's annoying and then i'm running around doing side missions and well, like i said to you and it's being extra harsh but I, it really did make me laugh and it like made me think more about my experience i was doing the side mission with the little girl in the, in the playground dump who's like my cats i miss my cats and cloud goes around to find the cats and when he finds one of the cats he goes down to pet it and it runs away and you get like a front on face of cloud uh, and he goes this sucks meow. and i was like i said out loud to myself it does suck cloud <laughs> I was like he's saying how i feel right now I'm but like, yeah like yeah don't you remember the 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 get the little girl's cat part of the original final fantasy 7 isn't that so riveting you like, know i do remember the dump playground i do because that's but there that was but awesome like yeah, that like, yeah it looks Outside great that, yeah they um, they you know they made it look perfect. like you know the guy's like there's an infestation of were rats uh, down the street i hope somebody takes them out so you and tifa go there and you fight I don't know what they are. Where mice? It's some other. It's something close, but that's not it. And then you go back to talk to the guy, and he's like, "Oh no, that's not them. It's the were rats. You got to take out." And then you literally turn around and go right back to the same place and, and fight there. three of the things. I'm like, "Where were you five seconds ago? Why are you here now?" Then you fight him, and you go back, and he's like, "Thanks a lot." And then just a little padding, just a little sweet padding to 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 make the world real. And one lady is literally like. Hey, there's a warehouse. There's something I need in a box. I don't know what box it is. Can you go smash the boxes and find out? <laughs> so that's what I'm doing with my time. And yeah. then you know what happens right after that? A mission where it's like, go open the door at that warehouse because there's a flying oh, monster there God. and you got to fight them. So I'm like, okay, I was just here. I could yeah. have done this now, but I'll go back again and you fight something flying in the air. And there's a that's it. There's a mission in Rebirth where the lady's like, I strapped this su these supplies around my dog's neck, follow him to the town. And it's like, wait a minute, why don't I just carry the supplies and I don't have to take the dog? You keep the dog and <laughs> the I'll dog go to the... where to go. And I can fast travel there. But nope, yeah. I had to follow the dog all the way across the world map. 
for like for nothing you know and it's um, like and and in rebirth uh you don't have to deal with it in your game but in my game you have to like worry about your relationships with your party members you have to like like be nice to them and like do side missions with them to get like a to get like a smiley face from them otherwise you'll miss out on like some some cutscenes apparently in the like, story that forward. you wanted to see in the first place Exa- that isn't there. you know yeah. it's insane it's insane uh again i i'm giving my honest opinion uh, i know when we're on the podcast it's more like open and like not as reserved and well thought out so it's not as uh I don't want to say my writing's elegant by any stretch, but I'm not writing it as, or I'm not speaking with as much care as I would when I write. It's just a more of a passionate discussion with friends. So I don't want anybody to think I'm knocking you if you like the game or love the game or whatever. But it, yeah, it's it's the aspects of, it's as a game in and of itself, it's just side missions that so far are very boring. Um, the game very, is not <laughs> Very stilted dialogue. Um, the fighting when they let me fight is entertaining. I like the fighting. It's, it's fun. I like the act. I like how they adapted the active time battle. So that's cool. Um, but if I were playing it and it wasn't final fantasy, I would feel the exact same way about all that stuff. Um, I would say the exact same things, but the problem is this is a remake of final fantasy. So then I have a whole bunch of other baggage that's lumped in that makes me dislike it more. And I feel I should judge it on that because it's Final Fantasy VII. So uh, I don't know. Um, and what's up with Tifa? You remember the, you probably remember the first game, the original game, much better than I do. But in this game, Tifa is like full on like anime. Like when she's talking, she's like posing and like all, like all, and like spinning and dancing. And I'm like, I don't remember her being like that in the first game or in the original game. Um, and I don't have anything wrong with those. I watch a ton of anime. I see characters like that all the time. But when I think Tifa, Yuffie's more like that. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you're exactly right. And I'm like, it's funny because I've been thinking if Tifa is like that, then what's she going to be like? But, uh, you know, I think of Tifa as like kind hearted and sweet, but with a bit of an edge. And here, she's like very like sh- syrupy sweet yeah i don't know if she'll get an edge later on i don't know if she'll cool down you know things well things happen in the original game but i don't know what's going to happen but here i'm like because uh, you know it's like her doing that and cloud being like sure whatever yeah okay. i yeah i don't know that how much can i get my pay the characterizations are are lacking for me i feel like Super different Sanchez characters says it's a new game with final fantasy 7 characters there you go that's how i should look at it yeah that's um, how I started looking at it. I looked at it. Well, I think I mentioned last week, or I tried to. It, I'm looking at it like multiverse. Like this is yeah. just a different universe with the same characters. Yeah, has nothing to do because the changes that they made, some of them are pretty asinine. So, um, yeah, I mean, right off the bat with this game, Cloud, you find out so much about Cloud and his relationship with Sephiroth that, like, in the in the original game like an hour into this game you're like oh whoa, whoa, whoa. what's going on here we're already huge, talking about this yeah huge changes an hour into the game the Hi, whole Spaniel. first the whole first midgar section which is the whole first game is totally different yeah they added new characters in and guess what that character the new character that you love so much is in the second one too <laughs> well uh yes yeah, so i made my promise that i would go back to it i am going to see it through um it is not by far not the worst game i've ever played if it didn't have final fantasy 7 stuff it would like i said the mechanics would still bother me just the same um but it's I, just a ho-hum experience with some fun battles at this point but i mean at this point I'm you pretty mu- you pretty uh, much have an idea of what it, what you're in I'm for in it right to the credits roll you baby we're doing it i mean i i recommend you stop but you do you I'll be doing it. Um, hey, did you tell everybody you finished a book? No. I, I finished a book. <clears throat> I finished House by on House on the Cerulean Sea. And it was excellent. Oh, who gave you such an excellent recommendation? Mom branded. Uh, as I said, um, my favorite books. My New Year's resolution was to read because school killed any joy in reading for me. But now I'll finally change On behalf that. Half of teachers, I would like to apologize. So that's my third book, and it was the best one I read. And it's a lovely story, and also an upsetting story in a sense that it reflects the world that we live in. But it was a lovely story, and I love this author's writing. His name is 
TJ Klune, and in You're in Luck, he's written quite a few books. And a sequel to that is coming out this year. I have it pre-ordered. Um, it was excellent. It was excellent. I'll talk more about it in the after show. Uh, and the next book I'm going to read is Project Hail Mary, because I want to pivot to something sci-fi. So that's mm -hmm. what I'll be doing, because I've heard good things. All right, let's Be do... I'm sorry. Before you move on, could you talk about what you thought of the Princess Peach? Oh, my God. I almost forgot. Yeah, I want to talk about it. Um, well, not surprisingly, I loved, loved it. it. Um, you know, I expected it was going to be... Uh, it's supposed to be... I expected it to be, you know, this is going to be for... Uh, a, a, people who don't play all that many games or younger gamers or whatever the case may be. Um, I really liked it. Mom brain came in and watched me playing it. Cause I, man, I loved the, the music. Um, I loved the whole idea of everything taking place on a stage. Like, I just love that idea. I mean, there's elements of that in super Mario brothers three, but here it's like, I just, Love that whole idea. Um, I love all the hidden stuff. You know, I'm a sucker for hidden stuff in games. So Secrets. there's what, like 10 hidden stars, whatever they are. I don't know. I don't remember what they're called yeah. um, in each level. And a couple of them uh, were in sneaky places. So I like that. I love the idea of hidden spots where if you stand there, a spotlight shines down on you and you can hit the pose button and it opens up a secret door or something. I love all that. And I love how like each stage section is its own like gameplay is never going to get stale because you're doing what like 15 minute segments and it's something different. So in a demo, you get uh, what's what's she called? Uh, Sword fighter peach. Yeah. Fencing, um, peach. fencing peach, whatever. Yeah. yeah the first one is walking around Swash sword buckling. fighting, swashbuckling. Sure. Um and then the second one you do is uh, patissier. Yeah. Patissier Peach, where she's making cakes and cookies and stuff. Bet you love that. You know? You didn't think you would, and you did. I. It's not... That's what I got to watch. It's not... The fact that it's taking place inside of a play makes me enjoy it more or give it more of a pass. Like Super Mario Odyssey, it's like, here's Food World. I'm like, this is BS. Here it's like this is a stage where things are made out of snacks. I'm like, all right, I can tolerate this. Um, I'm gonna have to go in and do it again because there were a couple of mom brain watch me. There are a couple of those cake decorations where I just <laughs> screwed it up. Like I was when the, bad when that. the cake is spinning and it's like the clover leaf design, uh, mom brain watch me have like a malfunction. I was like, yeah. what? How do I go? I've never seen How it before. I've never seen go? it. Like he couldn't orient himself correctly. Every time, I was like, I got to just place myself. And every time I was thinking about where to place myself, the pie had rotated already and the, oh, or the cake no. had rotated. I'm like, ah, I can't do it. And that's how you get some of the stars there. So I'm like, this is going to be trouble for me. I got to, oh, how am no. I going to get all these stars? So I got to go back in and do it. But um, I really liked it. If I'm being full on honest, there were a couple of times where I just teared up from it because I just I just love the idea of Peach getting her own game, that it's completely different kind of gameplay and everything. It's not just like, here's Princess Peach and it's a platformer. And I love Super Princess Peach. But mm, even, back emotional. Then, <laughs> uh, even back then, I was like, oh, God, she cries to make things grow. I'm like, Ugh. but here I... I I really liked it. I liked it. I thought I was going to be like, this is fun. This is nice. But I'm like very excited for it now. I know it's going to be an easy breezy experience minus the cake part. Mm -hmm. But um, I love the hidden stuff. I love the music. I love the gameplay. Very simplistic. Very fun. Uh, I love the, the style of it. Yeah, it's uh, better than I was hoping for. I was interested just because we don't hardly ever get a game where Peach is the lead. But uh, mechanics speaking and a design approach speaking, I feel like it's a really smart deci decision and it will keep um, younger players interested because you're not doing the same thing all the way through. So I honestly hope like uh, maybe you'll go to other parts of the theater and you'll get to experience like another stage play with one of the characters you've already done. So like another sword fighting one maybe that's a little more layered or I don't think I can take more complicated cakes, but and then there's, you know, you see what, all, like, each one's going to be its own type of gameplay. Like, the cake gameplay one is completely different from the sword fighting one. There's, like, one that's basically a, a shmup where you fly around through the air. There's another one that's, uh, uh, what do we call it? Carmen San Diego Peach, yeah. where she's, like, s sneaking around cool. building tops. Sleuthing. There, There's a detective one where you're solving a mystery. So I love nice. the idea of, like, let's take all these different gameplay ideas and throw them into this one experience. So 
uh, yeah, not going to be your typical Nintendo fans uh, cup of tea. They're not going to be interested. Uh, that's why the demo's there, though. So they there's going to be Nintendo fans who are like, what's this game about? Play the demo and be like, that's not for me. And that's fine. But there's going to be other people who are like, what's this about? I love this idea. So perfect game to have a demo for. I totally understand it's not for everybody, but I greatly enjoyed it. Like, I'm very much looking forward to playing the full game. And I know it's not going to be, you know, like 40 hours or anything. It's probably going to be like five or six hours something like that if i had to guess that might even be stretching it but if you're going for all the hidden stuff which i am definitely going to do uh might get a little more time out of it but yeah I, i'm excited i really liked it uh not the best game i played by any means but it, it's a nice game i i found it quite enjoyable mom brain literally was standing next to me and she can vouch for my excitement mm -hmm. i was like this is really great mm -hmm. uh so there that's all that i played that i can talk about Let's do questions. Send your questions at goninpod at gmail.com. Where? Go ninpod at gmail.com. They can be about Nintendo, video games in general, or whatever the hell oh. you want. Uh, Tumino Blake has a question, and only uh, I expect nothing less from them. What is your favorite phallic food item? Mm. Mushrooms. I guess they are phallic. Oh, I'm okay. going with, a, right. with just a roll. I love bread, so like a hoagie roll or a a uh, submarine sandwich roll I like, or French bread. Give me the French bread. Now that's a phallic one. Damn. Um, I love bread. So yeah, I'm just going at some sort of elongated. Some of us of haven't been blessed like you, RMC. Uh, I don't think the French are supposed the to be blessed like that. pigs in blanket but... <laughs> is what I'm used to. Uh, I, I, mom brain will vouch. I love a pig in a blanket. So you're in good company. I, uh, however, do not. Phallic foods, you too? Uh, I guess either, I mean, I really like sausage, yeah, nice yeah. hot Italian mm, sausage yeah. in my mouth. Speaking of that, who saw that Oscar Mayer is finally doing no meat plant-based hot dogs and sausages? Uh, I, I since one. I stopped eating I meat, haven't. I'm very excited to try it because I miss hot dogs. I want a hot dog real a bad. milk dog? I miss a, a milk dog, milk yeah. Dog. <laughs> the, I, the last time I had meat, no, that's not true. The, one of the last times I had meat was a milk dog. Because mom brain's like, let's go to friendlies. And we went and I ordered a hot dog because that's what I always get there. And I ate the whole hot dog. And then I was ordering dessert. And I was like, I just ate meat. Like I just zoned out because I was like, oh boy, the friendlies hot dog and just ate it. And it never registered. I was like, oh, I was not eating meat anymore. Uh, I'm sure there was very little meat. Uh, that's and that's <laughs> yeah. how I comforted yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah. It's like, like the Simpsons say, chicken yeah. beaks and shoelaces. Yeah. And, and, and stop stuff. eating buttholes and lips yeah, have you yeah very uh, little meat in these gym mats sorry sausages and sausages and maybe a nice sweet juicy peach there you go oh, oh there you go. All right. very okay. nice do anything i food? could eat a peach for hours how male chauvinist we were all going for dick shaped things and lou brought out the peach so <laughs> what? i'm pretty sure doesn't phallic mean like penis shaped is yeah yeah shaped? that's why i didn't say anything else uh -oh. yeah well he's 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 bringing in everybody though why can't Inclusion. why can't we talk about sexual Men can have vaginas. Foods? It's not it's not it's penises, period. Y yes, I understand, but what's the woman equivalent? And women can have penises. Yeah. But, but what's the women like what's the women what's equivalent? What's the phallic word yeah. for oh. female genitalia, I guess? Uh, I That's know. interesting. And there's two jokes to make there, and they are old fashioned, and I will not make them. Oh, I can think just of just like an old fashioned. Uh <laughs> uh, yes, do go ahead. I don't know. You know me in these questions. A popsicle. There you go. There you go. So you're like no. Yonic. Like a Yoni. Phallic and Yonic. Like Yonic, Yonic. There you go. Yoni. Thank you. We've Fotus. all learned something Fotus today. Fotus Doulis. Fotus Doulis. <laughs> uh, we also have a Patreon question. Mom Brain, did you know that you could join the Patreon? For a dollar. For a dollar. Your uh, Packer that. did. For a dollar. And they asked this question. Oh. You've talked about your dislike of food theme levels in games. I have literally this <laughs> yeah, show. Just like five minutes ago. <laughs> what I want to know is what some of your favorite level designs, themes, or environments are. Uh, hmm. Mm. I love a snow level. Oh. Like uh, Goldeneye, that snow level. Love it. Um, I love a, a neon nighttime city level. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love... A sky based level, something where you're up in clouds or something. I love that. Um, yeah, come on. On the wings of tails airplane. Um, what else do I really like? I like a fight when it's in like a like a rave. 
like a dance club or something. I love oh, those yeah. kind of levels. Streets of Rage esque. Uh, yeah. Gritty kind of. I love any. Yeah, I love any kind of platforming level with verticality. Something where you're climbing mm -hmm. up something. Yeah, I like that there. a lot. Get up. Uh, I love. Uh, I love like a. Like a. Like a. a mechanical factory level oh. like a donkey kong country factory <laughs> level uh you like know what else scrap I like? brain zone yes i'll take that that's a good one <laughs> um i like stark minimalism like in control i love that just like a couple shades of non-color really and just I, I something about that i i like that feeling i like that vibe i've said more than enough you guys so you haven't level designs themes or environments uh, oh. I like. I was, I was gonna say isolated mansions. Uh, mm -hmm. Those oh, those do it for me. Now it makes sense. What were you gonna say? Come on, you know your favorite Fortnite location. Oh, cemeteries. Cemetery. Big <laughs> big cemetery fan. Yeah, I don't know what happy it is. Happy that it's still there. It's untouched. I, I was happy that it was still there, and then they have a whole like underworld section. I was like, yeah. this is my place too, baby. That's true. Um. Yeah, so uh, stuff like that I like. I'm also a fan of like nighttime city, nighttime like neon city kind of thing. Mm. Ne Neo city kind of mm. is cool. Um, I like a I like a, a forest. I like a good forest level Ooh, too. I agree with that. Uh, those are just some that I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, loop, Mombrain. I was definitely gonna say forest levels. All right, yeah, yeah. I like that. Um. And then I, I never really thought about it, but that the neon city thing, I think that's really we got really it's a commonality too. between all of us. I was gonna say you like forest. I also like forest levels, but I said I like like industrial factory levels in Odyssey. There's the whatever that one is called, where it's like the jungle underground with the dinosaur and the greenery, but there's the red like iron structures. Yes. Oh, I, I don't love remember that. what I it's love called. That one. But... That's my kind of my kind of place. Um Yes, mom brain, go ahead. Your types of locations. I mean, you guys named a whole bunch. Uh, I do like a like a cozy something that feels cozy, like a you know maybe it's like rainy outside mm -hmm. and you're inside or you know something like that. Uh, Anastasia Beaver has, and I'm so with you. They say I like house settings where you're tiny. I love that. <laughs> yeah, me too. Love that. Uh, yes, Radical Defect says I like music levels. Of course, I love a music level. Uh, that's a way to get me to tear up in a game. Give me a good music level. Roth loves lava levels. Uh, Radical Defect also says an ancient city after a cave. They're a fan of that. Uh, I don't like generally sewer levels. I'm usually very, very anti sewer levels. Yeah. And like every game has a sewer level. I mean, I'm every okay zombie with... game we've ever played has a sewer level. They're, I'm okay with sewer levels when it makes makes sense thematically. So like a Ninja Turtles game with a sewer level, that's, I get it. That's oh yeah, I don't mind that. I don't mind if it were like shoehorned in. That's not why I don't like yeah. it. Usually I don't like it because it's grimy and gross and it's usually really <laughs> long and it's usually like, well, once we get through this level, then we'll get to like another fun area. There is one sewer level I really like and it's in one of the Splatterhouse ones and I don't, there's just something about like, you. what's his name, trudging through the sewer water and like monsters coming up out of the water to fight them and you splash them against like the wall and the sewer. I don't know. That one just does it for me. But uh Radical Defect says, and what does Final Fantasy VII Remake have that the original lacks? A sewer level. There's, I thought there's a little sewer action in Final Fantasy, in the original Final Fantasy VII, but... Very, yeah, you are, what is it, like, it's literally one screen or yeah, two screens. Yeah, it's not even, there. but it, I wouldn't even consider it a thing. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that gets expanded for the remake. So, uh, so that's yeah, my they, kind of levels. They expanded on it, I want to say, for the Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 remakes, both their sewer levels were expanded, and I was like, the worst parts of the game expanded yeah. and then they did it at the expense in Resident Evil 3 they did it at the expense of like that awesome creepy clock tower mansion at the end and it's like what did I just say I love the mansions people <laughs> that's my least favorite part of uh, Batman Arkham Asylum when what's his name oh when you're going through the Croc. Crocs yeah. lair and you have to like walk real slow yeah, make yeah, sure yeah. you walk because yeah. he can see you and no, feel you. you no thank you uh, Mombrain let's do music Send your music to goninpod at gmail.com. Oh, go ninpod at gmail.com. Maybe Please I will put music in the title to help out your local Hell. mom brain. I got music. What? You want to hear it? You want to hear it? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs>
This is so my mom. My mom texts me and she goes, this is uh, the, the New York Times mini crossword puzzle had a couple Mario questions in it. And then she sent me literally every answer to every question. So like, I, it's, I don't even get to do it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. She shared. Okay. Oh, my good little he, she's and they's. Here comes some music. Music. From Radical Defect slash Master Higgins. Oh, I'm ready. Spoke his name. Oh, earlier. I'm not ready. NES. Right? Right. Well, it sounds like that. Something to that. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's to the franchise. think so well i mean you have all the power you could look it up so this i mean i'll take your word for it uh yeah, I, got I we got nothing <sighs> i don't know it, it it is it is there's it is a it is a franchise franchise why, why are you sure now because radical defect slash master Higgins all right well then so. then i was gonna well this is funny wait he told you... All right, so then it's Adventure Island. He sent the, the song. Oh, and, oh okay. Yes. So then it's two or three. I don't know. Yep, it is Hudson's Adventure Island 3. Okay, quick question. Can I question you on something? Yeah. I asked you, what's the franchise? You said, I don't know. What's the name of the game? Adventure Island 3. I know, but... Three. Sometimes I get confused with franchise, and it's okay. <laughs> it is okay. Yep. Licensed is different from franchise. Got it. This one comes from Turbo K. Do I know this? I think I know this. I'm not sure. I think so. What system? Switch. I feel like I know the composer, but not from games. Ooh. This guy's cooking. I know this composer. I'm going to say right. I know. Is it like a skateboarding game or a snowboarding game? I can't tell by what I'm looking at or by the title. Shucks. So, like, well, it's got lots of, like, pinks and blues. And, yeah. Yeah. Let's start with S. Mm hmm. Sh Shirobun? No. Shirobun. No. It's not one word. Shinobigami Tensei. Not quite. And I don't know. It is, in fact, Super Mega Zero. Oh, that's the game I keep getting told to play. Sweep, deep, doo deep. And it was from Turbo K. This one comes from Storbus Corbin. Not a Mega Man game? No. Talking about a ninja? Nope. Why can't I place this company? I, this is very clearly a company. Is this Konami or? It is Sunsoft. Wow. It is. I'll do that. Are there any of those games you were talking about? No. It's Sunsoft, but it's not using the Sunsoft base. It's not something with a ninja? No. Okay, is it Batman? It is. It's Batman 2? Just Batman. Wow. No, that's not right. Okay. On Game Boy? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, that's right. I'll take oh. it. Oh, hmm. interesting. <laughs> <over there>. From <laughs> Service Corbin. His sensory deprivation that's so he can get all like yeah. the... <laughs> that's why it didn't make sense to me. Okay, okay. We got there. All right. We. 
<laughs> we, so we, yeah, we. yeah, team effort. This one comes from Jess I. Luigi's Mansion. No. I'm going to say it's not Nintendo. It's really nice, but it's not their style. I, I'm pretty sure that's correct. What I said is correct? Yeah, I can look it up. Uh, house kind of thing. Right? Feels like that. Whimsical. Man, it's a style that I making it's making sense to me, but I can't place it. I'm just, I don't think it's Square Enix, but I'll guess Square. It is. Okay. Oh, what's Switch? Yeah. All right. That should narrow. Crystal Chronicles. Um. Aqua Path Traveler. Nope. Uh, Project Triangle. No. Triangle saga, Strategy. Saga game. No and no. Tactics. No. It's not Dragon Quest. It's not. It's not Live Alive. Fantasy. It's neither of those. Hey, there's one I forgot. Live Alive. That is something else. I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting a Square Enix franchise. Oh, uh. He's close. Break over the coals for it. Bravely Default 2. Yes. Oh, thank God. Wow. I was going to say Bravely something, and I didn't know what Bravely Default 2. Uh, this one comes from Steve Irwin, RIP. Whoa. This is lovely. What is this? I got. Oh, I got no clue. It's obviously Turok. <laughs> I love scene where he marries the philosopher. Yeah. <laughs> Walking in the sunset together on the beach. <laughs> You truly to rocked my world. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. I, I don't know at all. Uh, wedding planner of the game. Whoa! Oh, is this the same thing? It is. Oh. Stardew Valley. Harvest nope. Moon. Uh-uh. Rune Factory. Nope. I got nothing. I don't know. Up? Yeah. Pokemon Coliseum! Son of a bitch. I couldn't even place it as Pokemon. Yikes. Dang. Um, good one, Steve Irwin, RIP. This one um, is from Nico Darunia, and I have to just give you a disclaimer because I don't want it to throw you off. When I'm looking at the cover art, um, the, the cover art I see does not list a Nintendo system, although the game did come out on a Nintendo system, so you may be listening to... Gotcha. The non-Nintendo version. Okay. Good to know. Yes. Movie-based game, so it's not now. What? What do you mean? It's not Switch. No. Uh, no. Two Towers or Return of the King? No. So that, is this a GameCube game then? It is. All right. That narrows thing. What's uh, Rogue Squadron? No. Great guess. 007? No. Great guess. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what other, like, what movies came out then that would have game adaptations. It's not Shrek. No. So do a Star Trek game. No. Man, you said Star Wars. Wow. 
Well, I said Rogue Squad. Yeah. I don't know if there's any it's, other it's not it's Star Wars, movies. right? No, and it's not just movies. Oh, well, we don't know that. Jurassic Park. No. Uh, Matrix. No. Oh, not a bad guess. Spider-Man? Yes. Oh! Good for you! I don't know where Spider-Man to go from there. Two? Uh, just Spider-Man. Oh, okay. Um, so this was the PlayStation 2 version, apparently. Uh, from Nico Drunia. Uh-oh. <laughs> this one comes from Mikey3319. This is one of those songs that I know, and I never remember why I know it. Oh my god, I know because it's a Tommy Tallarico game. Uh, yeah, no, I think it is. Actually, now that you say it. But what? What is this, Super Nintendo? Or yeah. Super, Super Nintendo? Yeah. What did he do on Super Nintendo? Uh, Jesus, I don't know. Chester Cheetah. No. Fido Dido. No. Spot. Cool spot. It is. Hey, we got cool there. Cool spot. Um, We have one coming from Guy Bones. I got absolutely nothing. Red Steel. No. Yeah, I couldn't tell you. We got nothing. It's a blank, total blank. I got no. It was Snow Bros. Nope. I mean, I know it, but no bros. Whoa. Yeah, Yeah. no bros. From Guy Bones. Uh, This one comes from Geku Kitsune. On. Sure. It has yeah. to be. <laughs> yeah. Got to be three. Nope. Keep going. Four. Nope. Nope. Five. Nope. Seven. Nope. Seven. Oh, eleven. Nope. Eight. Nope. Nine. Yes. yes. I felt is like this, that Price is Right game where it's like higher, 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 lower. Higher, is lower. this a uh, Splash Woman? It is. The only female robot master. Perfect timing. Mm-hmm. Way to go, Splash Woman. <laughs> <We've>... <laughs> She's a mermaid. Splash Woman, we speak your name. Uh, some people say she's a myth. Um, this one is the last one, and it comes from Akumashu. Focus all attacks. <laughs> Troublemaking song, if I ever heard one. That Adam's family. Nope. That fart noise makes me want to say rare, but I don't think it's rare. Uh, it is not. And it's not Undertale, otherwise RMC would have gotten nope. it. No, this sounds like it's going to be one of those Super Nintendo or N64. It's Super Nintendo. I yeah, I just know it by the sound, but I don't know the song. What's going on? Is it monsters? Is it western? Is it? I'm gonna say probably monsters. Cowboys versus monsters. Mm, sorry, no. Is it? Uh, that we those noises. Hold on. Is it Capcom? It's not. Is it Konami? Nope. Then I'm just taking out of my misery. Everyone agree? I agree. Final Fantasy VI. Oh. Zozo Town. Makes sense. Makes mm-hmm. sense. Mm-hmm. 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 
Didn't play it. Right. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. We got five out of ten. Six, Six out, out of nine. nine, baby. Five uh, out of ten. Not our best, not our worst. And I guess that's it, unless there's something else. Probably not anything else. Oh, my goodness. You won't believe this. Something is coming across Whoa. my desk right now. This is incredible. <laughs> Thank you very much, News Ticker. Ladies and gentlemen, every week I do this. So you should know that it's Do's Views. It's never news. Rumor of the week with Do Michaels. So I've got uh, a few little agents out there, spiders and flies, if you will, getting all the rumors about video games that um, exist for sure. And they bring them to me. And I've got some right here. Uh, by some, I mean one. And uh, by rumor, I mean this one's actually true this week, oh which God. is kind of interesting. Oh, my God. So um, really, really exciting. Uh, but here goes the rumor, and it's definitely true. So um, we heard that uh, Nintendo was pretty hasty to try to sue Yuzu over that emulation controversy. They were actually so quick to do it that they screwed up. They ended up suing famous game composer Yuzo Koshiro oh, instead. No. Uh, so coincidentally, Yuzo Koshiro did have uh, an emulation of all these Switch games so that he had to shut that down, oh. uh, which is kind of weird. But uh, uh, yeah, that's the true of the week. I heard he uh, hired a lawyer just in case, and the lawyer's name was Mr. X. <laughs> Wow. Well, sorry, Yuzo. I mean, I love your works. Uh, now you got to pay what two million, two point something million. That's... Well, they were they were gonna charge him uh, two million, but when they wrote it down on the thing, it just said two XX. Oh. Uh, so they didn't know what. The, his lawyer said that legally allows him to decide whatever amount. He exactly. Wants. Exactly. Oh, <laughs> yeah. now you're talking. So all's well that ends well. Thank you for that first time. Very real uh, rumor. Do we appreciate it? And that's all we got, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Oh, that's a great picture, man. That's great. <laughs> Thank you, do. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. After show, I said I will talk about that more in the after show. What was it? House on uh, the Cerulean Sea. Got a hardcore porn. No, I no. I mean, I'll talk more about House on the Cerulean Sea. What, what, what did I say I was going to talk about? Um, yeah, the book was very good. It's about this guy who works at this place. Yeah, Tentavision agrees with me. Where they Tentavision agrees and says the, the book. book. Okay. Um, they're gonna go. All right. He works at a place. And the place checks in on orphanages, and he's a guy that goes to different orphanages to make sure they're up to snuff. But these are not just your regular orphanage. Oh, it's... Weren't you talking about this book the last time I was here? I don't know. Or Mom Brain was. I swear, you maybe on the. I am we a big book reader. Fortnite or something you were talking about. It. Oh yes, because yeah, uh, Adam Fortnite Adam wanted to get into reading. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, uh, these orphanages. Why does orphanages sound like such a wrong word to me? Every time I say it, they are filled with children who are uh, magical. They we can definitely, definitely during cast spells or whatever. But uh, all those who have these special abilities in this world have to be registered. And obviously some parents don't want the children, so they give them up. So this guy's job is to go to these orphanages and make sure they're running in top shape and give his report back to the company. And uh, he's a very studious, very by the book guy. And the higher ups decide to send him to a one of a kind orphanages that he didn't orphanage or orphanage. orphanage. See, that's why it screws me up. Orphanage that he didn't know existed. And when he gets there, he finds a very, very peculiar set of children. Oh, and that's what the book is about. And it was excellent. I haven't had a book made me cry. I cried everything, but I could feel myself <laughs> almost crying. There we it. go. So that's All a first. Right. That's okay. a first. It's a uh, very so it can happen. It's very yes, it's very related to uh today's world, let's say. But love the way it's written. This author writes the way I want an author to write a book. And he's you know what? Also, I'd say he's funny. Yeah, you should definitely the way he writes the character is funny. So the one um what I think it's like the secret lives of puppets. 
is probably my least favorite of his that I've read. But if but you, if you read the very beginning, it's very funny. Like, and I'm not I'm I don't laugh out loud at a lot. And like I laughed out loud at the beginning of that book. Well, this made me like more than just blow air out my nose laugh when I was reading just because uh-huh. the way they write the main guy or the way he writes the main guy, Linus, is Linus's character is funny. So mm-hmm. it's great. It's uh, just it's a great book. You should read it. If you're into books, read it. Uh, Anastasia Beaver has and says, I read Under the Whispering Door this year around the anniversary of my of a death. And it just hit harder. My yeah, cousin yeah. recommended that I read that. I'm going to read. um Project Hail, Mary. Project Hail Mary, and then I'm going to read The Whispering Door. I think one. Whispering Door might make you cry. Because I want to give a little... Sp- I don't want to go overload on this one author. Plus, I'd like to move away from the fantastical and kid... It's not a kid book, but it's filled with kids. Um, kids. I want to move away from that and go sci-fi, because I like sci-fi, and I don't know that I've ever... Well, I guess uh, the first book I read was sci-fi. Mm-hmm. Uh, sci-fi. Just didn't like it. So, yeah, I'm going Project Hail Mary... Then I'll go to Whispering Door. So, yep, big reader now. That's me. I'm a b- big reader. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you, you read a book and you enjoyed it. And you're just like, ah, me, big reader now. No, no, it's I'm joking. That I, that I'm, hobby that I have no, no, and I'm, enjoyed. <laughs> I'm joking about it because I've only read three books and I'm 42 years old. So, it's like, well, I just, I think it's, it, I, there's, it's never too late. You know, I think oh, it's yeah, cool that, you know, that you're enjoying it because I've read, you know, books that I'm not too into and there's, but there's nothing better than a book that you get into. Like it's just something it, special. It's just, you know, school killed that part of me for so long. And even though I'm reading books and I'm enjoying it, I'm still, they still feel like a chore. Like I feel, still feel like I'm doing homework and that's all <laughs> from school. But now Rami, write a report on your book. <laughs> yeah. Like and let us know at the next podcast. What even it's if about. I'm reading it and enjoying it, there's just something in the back of my head. That's like, Oh God, a book. And not cause I think anything's wrong with books. It's just for almost all of my life. I have associated books with displeasure. So other than the uh, the ones that used to be hidden in the locker room back in middle school, but that's for another day. Um, Elon Musk is here. If I'm reading these books, then I won't be playing my video games. Well, that's the other thing. And this is such a stupid complaint, but it's a complaint everybody has. We all only have so much free time. What do you like? I want to watch movies. I want to watch TV shows. I'm uh, I include anime and all that in it. I want to read comics. I want to read books. I want to play video games. I want to listen to music. It's a lot of stuff. And any one of those things on their own would take up all the free time. So it's it's tough. Like I was like, I'm going to try to read at least two chapters of a book a week and I'll get in and play a game. And I want to make sure I watch this anime. Well, and to Kindle tell you the truth, is nice because it tells you how much you have left. Like that how much is very left. nice. You open it up and it's like 22 minutes for this chapter. And I'm like, okay, that's great. And also because I'm a weirdo, I'm like, not for me, damn it. And it'll be like, you know, you finished it in 20 minutes. I'm like, that's right. Shave two minutes off. Oh, nice. Um, But um, to tell you the truth, the biggest blessing for this has been the treadmill. Because once I stopped walking outside and started walking on the treadmill, now I watch something when I'm on the treadmill. So it's helped me watch a whole bunch of stuff. That's I was just telling <laughs> do. I watched uh, Poor Things. Uh, I watched part of that on the treadmill, but it's a two and a half hour movie. I'm not walking that long. So I finished the rest upstairs, but walking, forget it. I'm a, I'm walking two and a half. If it's a community day, I'll be walking right. a long time. I'll be watching the, way, the next whole, week is be watching day. the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I'll be walking <laughs> yeah. so much. Yeah. Um, yes. Make, I might make it to Mordor myself. 16th. <laughs> let me double check. 16th and 17th are the next community day. Uh, so next week. What are you What are you doing for community day? You just got to walk 10,000 steps. Oh, that's every day. <laughs> that's normal day for me. <laughs> well, you're, you're an animal. Uh, yeah, I walk for an hour. It's I change it every other day. So it's an hour one day, an hour and 15 the next day. So today was hour 15, but I do that back and forth. Um, so, yes, that's community day. And I've been watching stuff. I'm watching uh, Love is Blind as well. The new season of Love is Blind. I watched an episode of that today. Is that the one where they raise the thing up and you see? No, that's very different. <laughs> uh, Love is Blind is very quickly. People meet in pods. They don't see each other and they talk through a wall and you get to know each other okay, through that. Yeah, yeah. Then if you find someone that you think you really, 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 really like, <laughs> 
you propose to them. You spend a month together and then you decide if you're actually going to go ahead with the marriage. But all the beginning of the show is based on personality alone, no looks. And the I've watched seasons of the show before. This season of people is insane. <laughs> um, this lady was horrendous and said some really mean things and then like ended it by telling the guy like god bless you or something like that I'm like why <laughs> have this a nice life have person. a good life uh but yeah this season is wild uh super sanchez says my wife wants to watch poor things i probably won't watch it uh and i've heard damsel is not that great as well uh super sanchez that's my normal week the two little ones are the weekend or Saturday. Sunday. You're still walking 7,000 steps on the weekend. What are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know. <laughs> 18,000 steps in a work day. They got you walking all around. Oh, yeah. You're really that's moving. Insane. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, I mean, that's not new for you. I mean, when you were at Walmart, you were walking the yeah, ton too. Just when you were at Blockbuster, you weren't walking. Delivering that much. the mail was the yes, same thing. Yeah. Yeah, so. so that's, you're used to it. You're you're yeah. probably walking and you don't even today, need to be. Today I feel kind of lazy. I'm only at three thousand today. Uh, I can't lazy. look. Mine doesn't. Oh, lazy. so like on treadmill or like a regular walk outside, I'll be like six thousand steps. So then you know you add in your normal walking on top of that, I'll get to like anywhere between eight and ten thousand in a normal day. That's but, fair. Yeah. You know, if we're going out shopping or something, then it'll be like twelve to fifteen thousand. But yes, I'm not spending any more time walking than I have to. Uh. Spaceman, yeah, Roth. I want to watch Spaceman as well. You want? Yeah, yeah. Why not? I, I'll give it a shot. I I didn't like the first five minutes, but I should give it more than that. I mean, I'm not knocking you, and I'm not calling you out. Although I but guess it's kind of not calling the you whole out. Movie, but no, you've watched stuff on Netflix that's like I would think is way way worse than Spaceman. Like there, I I can I call something out? No, yeah, of course sure. not. But no, oh. I'm saying like I can't remember. But there's been movies where I'm like I'm so shocked that you watched that because. Uh, God, I wish I could think I of an example. I don't have the numbers, but let me tell you, it's been a lot. There's some, yeah, there's some, there's been stuff on Netflix where I was like, oh my God, dude's going to hate this. And then you like ended up watching it. I'm like, I'm just oh, shocked. Yeah. There were a couple there, like Red Notice. Or yeah, that's like, one. Like that's something like that. Example, yeah. You know, that was one that's like not good. But like, like that's just kind of like a bad movie. Whereas like the Spaceman thing was like so up its own butt i don't know I, again i only watched five minutes i should really give it a shot yeah, i but now like, it was like i if it's a bad movie that's one thing but if it's like an, a pretentious like like what is uh, he's talking to like a space spider about the meaning of life there Come is on. a difference between bad and pretentious bad I, I or just pretentious in general so i get that yeah um i liked the idea i liked the trailer as far as i was interested in it. right and i know adam sandler can do serious roles like he's great in uncut gems and i think he yeah his serious roles he's definitely surprised me so i, I really should give it another shot to be honest with you yeah lisa frankenstein that's another one i want to see because i've heard mixed reviews about it but i think it's something i would like and it's uh uh zelda williams first movie right so oh, yeah, i want to yeah, check yeah, that that's out right she's in that but uh, yeah, oh, somebody else said something about poor things and I missed it. I watched poor things. I greatly enjoyed poor things. Uh, Anastasia Beaver hasn't says poor things was very fun, but long. I didn't. I, Anastasia, call, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like you've said multiple times things are long. So maybe that's something for you. I didn't think it felt long. I thought it felt fine. I never considered the time to tell you the truth. Um, I didn't watch it yet, but I think. I think I saw that Napoleon is on the Apple Plus. Apple I've heard Plus. not good things. Yeah, I, I like that's why I haven't watched it yet because yeah. it's like part of me like wants to watch it, but part of me is like I don't even think I'm gonna like it. <laughs> um, yeah, I haven't heard good. Yeah, Apple had their three movie deal. Napoleon was one. Killers of the Flower Moon and Argyle. Yeah, and so Argyle's I was gonna say two that were supposedly flops, and then one that's you know uh, nominated for movie. Uh, I've heard like really bad things about this Argyle. Like yes from from people who you wouldn't think would be saying like i'm listening to a podcast and like famous people are being like i yes. went to see the movie and it sucked yeah and it's yeah, like yeah. man don't they usually like sugarcoat this in the industry <laughs> yes. you know like they're not I, mean, gonna... I think like the floodgates open early for a few pro uh, like big names to be like this movie's horrible and everybody else is like oh okay we can talk about it <laughs> um speaking of movies that apparently are good and i didn't think they would be have you guys heard of ricky stanicki Oh God! Yeah, I've heard of it. So that. it's done yeah. by one of the Farrelly brothers. Yeah, I mean, um, hey, it might be good. And every review I've read has been like, imagine if the Farrelly brothers 
after they did something about Mary made another funny movie in that style. <laughs> yes, they're like, that's, that's what this is. So they're like, ignore everything that came out after that. Movies. They did a movie in that tradition. So they're like, it's very 90s-esque in that kind of style of humor. And a lot of people, are, or some people are like, there's one too many dick jokes for my liking. But outside of that, it's yeah. got the same kind of silly, goofy plot and like the emotional beats to it that you would expect. But apparently it's a very... Or it's apparently it's a decently funny movie in that old style. It's like I haven't seen something like that in forever. Is. So it's on Amazon. If you got Amazon, you can watch there it. There you for go. No additional cost. That's the one I do have. There you go. You can watch it, and it's starring Zac Efron and John Cena. Yeah, John Cena is Ricky Stenicki. Yeah. Um, and I love the idea for the story because it's so stupid. It's these four guys basically whenever they want to get away from their wives or their kids or whatever. They say they're going to hang out with their college friend, Ricky Stenicki. But in actuality, they're all hanging out with each other. And Ricky Stenicki doesn't exist. It's some guy they made up as an excuse to get away with friends. <laughs> but there, something happens where they have to go to like Ricky Stenicki. Uh, like the wives want to meet him or something. So they hire a guy, which is John Cena, to pretend he's Nicky Stenicki. Right. That's the plot. Uh, yeah, I'm not like chomping at the bit to watch it. But I was like, oh, well, it's funny. It's just... I love the idea of a movie being funny so that it I like, I like them. that, but I've seen the trailers and I don't know if I've grown up or if I, I don't know, I, you Too know, many dick jokes. <laughs> yeah. Maybe funny. I'm just an old fuddy daddy. I think I'm just an old like crotch these days. Or uh, whatever, audience know. gave or critics gave it 50% audience gave it 71%. So it probably is funny. It probably has some, I'm sure, I don't know. here's what I'll say without watching it. I'm sure it has its moments and I'll leave it at that. Yeah. And I don't hate John Cena. I mean, I like that. He gives it a shot. Uh, yes. I've seen, I've been seeing compilations of his, they just added peacemaker to mortal Kombat. And oh, he did cool. all the lines yeah, for it. Nice. I've and seen I've those. seen a compilation of quips that he does in the game. And some of them are pretty damn funny. And he's doing them as Peacemaker. So that makes it that much better. Uh, all right, everybody. That's enough after show. We, we, I got to pee. We got, we're old people. We got to go to bed. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, oh, hold on. Anastasia says, I saw Iron Claw and I cry for Zac Efron because he's aged so badly. <laughs> I mean, I cried at that movie not because of Zac Efron's aging, but... Boy, that, that's a movie. That is a movie. He's that's, great in that that's movie. That's the Von Erich he's, one, right? Yes. Yeah. He's fantastic in that. Yeah, everybody in that movie is really good. Yeah. Did you? You didn't see it, right? Not yet. Uh, yeah. It. Everybody in it is phenomenal. In particular, Zac Efron's scene at the end is like, whew, man, he he pours it on. So uh, mm. it was. It's a very, very, very good movie. But it is for a couple of weeks, you're going to be like, I, uh, I'm depressed. <laughs> Dang. And the worst part is the movie version of the story is less depressing than the actual story. So they had to Hollywood it up. Uh, they made it. They, I'm guessing they didn't in real. What do you know about it? I don't want to spoil anything. I know it. Yeah. In real life, there's one more death that happens that they don't cover in the movie. Cause yeah. in the movie, you're like, this can't be you're like this can't even be true. And yeah. then you look it up and it's way worse yeah. than the true like, story. Oh my God, it is real and it's worse. Yeah. All right. That's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, we'll see you next week. Play some games with friends, family, hang out, relax, rest. You deserve Meet it. some new friends while playing games. That's right. And then uh, go hang out with them. IRL. But be safe. Be safe. If Get you see Lube's name online, me. don't, don't uh, block them. Just block them. <laughs> uh, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. I had Lube. I meant to tell you this. I could have.